Hello and welcome, welcome. Welcome to another live on Marlene's How To's. Let me know if you can hear me. I see that there's one person waiting. So we're just waiting a little bit for a few more people to join in. Okay. So if you've never been on my channel before, um, and this is also for the people on the replay, my name is Marlene, and this is Marlene's How To's, my home and garden channel. I mostly, you know, do gardening videos, um, you know, on my regular videos when I do them. But as far as the live videos go, I try to do things that are topical, you know, like women's health, for example, um, is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, women's wellness. We're going to be looking at different aspects of it, diet, exercise, um, you know, um, hydration, um, fiber in your diet, different types of food, um, exercise, um, just different things. And a chunk of tonight's discussion, this is basically um, a um, from feedback that I got on the previous slide that I did with my husband. And it's in reference to, we were talking about perimenopause and how it affects, you know, your relationships and so on. So even if you're a younger person, you know, still it will help to hear this information because, you know, at some point, you know, you will, you will get to it. Okay, so let me take a look at the chat and see what's going on over here. So Tiffany says, hello. Hi, Tiffany. Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you could join me. Very, very glad to have you. We're just waiting for a few persons to come on and join us, but I'm just giving a little overview of, um, you know, what we're going to be covering tonight, just the different topics and everything. Um, let me just try to do a little adjustment here on my laptop. It's a little bit, yeah, it needs to come down a little bit more. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So let's see. RCB Maverick Hunter says, poking in to say hello. All right. I hope you, hello, Maverick. I hope you'll stay with us for a little bit. Definitely, de definitely glad to have you. And of course, this is not just for women. It, um, it does affect men, the men in our lives as well, whether it be your husband, your spouse, your boyfriend, your brother, your uncle, anyone that interacts with you, because, you know, if you are well, then you'll be able to relate better, better to other people that are in your life. So you can invite them as well to hit that share button and encourage them to come on over and join in this discussion because it really is a sharing of ideas that we're doing. And we're basically just here to learn from each other. It's not like me telling you what to do or anything because I am not a medical professional. I'm just basically going over my experiences, some of them things that I've heard from other people, and also to get your take on it. So let me just take a sip of water and see what else is going on on the chat right now. And I have my little fan over here. I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna take it down just for a minute. But we'll bring it up in a little bit in our later discussion. So Bruce Lee says, hi, Miss Marlene. I will listen in as I can get better, another perspective so I can be a better husband. Absolutely, and that's what it's all about. I see Mondel there. Hey, Mondel. <laughs> Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad to see you. I hope you're having a wonderful time wherever you are with your hubby because that's what it's about, you know, taking some time off and enjoying life together because we only have one life to live and, you know, you got to take that time out to nurture your relationship. So I do appreciate you stopping by. And of course, you know, anybody that's not able to stay for the entire video, you can always go back and catch the replay. Afterwards, it will be available. You may not see the comments, but the replay will be there so you can hear what we talked about and the ideas that we shared and so on. So, like I said, we're gonna be looking at some, you know, different stuff. Some of them may be of a medical nature. I am not a doctor. So this is not medical advice that I'm giving you. It's just information that I would have heard, gleaned, or even things that I learned from my own life over the years. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is um, talking about diet, which is a very important aspect of our life. Um, people have different types of diet. People have a regular diet. Some people are vegan, some are vegetarian. The pescatarian diet has become a little bit more um, popular these days, which is basically we are having fish only. Um, so, you know, some people, it's hard for them to give up meat. I know for me it is because <laughs> if a day, and you can let me know in the comments. And by the way, guys, be sure to give me a thumbs up. You, know, you can come on the, the live chat just for a second or two and just give me a thumbs up so YouTube will send this out to more people, whether during the live or after the fact. And I see um, Annette Price. She says, hi, Marlene. Hi, Marie. Good to see you, my dear. Welcome, welcome. All right. So in terms of the diets now, um, you know, they, sometimes they say you are what you eat. Kind of sort of true in a sense because, you know, what you put into your body 
has a lot to do with, you know, your, your whole outcome on your life and living and all of that. So your diet is pretty important. Um, like I said, um, I know I have to have meat. Um, some people don't are able to go vegan. Some people do vegetarian. This is like whenever I try, you can tell me if you've ever tried going on a, um, on a diet before where you're only having, um, you know, no meats at all. If you tried it and how you felt, if you felt it could work, if you are on that kind of a diet right now, I would definitely love to hear from you. But the main thing is to make sure that you have clean, you know, clean things going into your body. So, you know, just keep your body as clean as possible. Try to avoid the junk foods, you know, like a lot of soda and all, you know, you know, all of those sweets and stuff like that. That's not really good for you. You can treat yourself every now and then. There is nothing wrong with that. But I find that, you know, when you stay away from certain types of foods, it's like your body doesn't even crave them anymore. It's like you don't even want them anymore. You know, so it's a good idea to make sure that you, you know, look out for stuff like that, you know, and try to avoid them. So let me see. So Tiffany says, I try to stick to a healthy diet, but when it comes to me having IBS, yes, and that's irritable bowel syndrome um, and being lactose intolerant. And that's probably what's causing you because sometimes you have hidden dairy in some of the foods. I also am um, lactose intolerant for most things, but you might not be for everything because if I have milk, guys, I can tell you, it's going to mess me up. It's no joke. <laughs> It really and truly will mess me up. So, but I can have ice cream and I'm so happy. But I said, thank you, God. You know, you allowed me to have that because I love ice cream. And you can tell me if you're an ice cream lover on there too, you know, but I love ice cream. But like I said, I can't have milk. You know, milk tends to mess me up. So, you know, I go ahead and just have what I can have. Like cheese is for, and, and that's the next thing again too. Sometimes you may be allergic to something, but the way that it gets prepared you're not affected by it in that way. Because like for me, for example, if I have cheese, like say it's baked in mac and cheese, I can have a little of it. But if I go and just cut like a slice of cheese, maybe like once in a week or two, I'm okay. But like I try to have it like back to back, it is definitely going to mess me up. So she said, um, I have to be very cautious on what I eat. Some foods easily, easily make me sick, but I try to stay clean. Absolutely. And that's what it's all about. And it's about knowing your body too, you know, like what works for you and what does not work. Um, Mondale from Johnson Home, the course is I'm on a health and wellness journey and boy, it's hard. Yes, it is. It's hard. But my family is very supportive on my journey, so they are not letting me give up. Absolutely. And that is it right there. Because when your family is there with you and supporting you, it helps because like my husband, he likes to get me sweet treats, you know, because I have a sweet tooth. That's just me naturally, <laughs> you know, so he'll go and he'll get me this and, you know, like certain kind of pastries. I really like them and all of that. And of course, Valentine's Day, you can see I still I still kept these up because I'm like, we're talking about women stuff. So want to keep up the heart. We're talking about heart health a little bit, too, as well. And the pinks and all the other things that I had decorated over here. Um, let me just shift you a little bit so you can see just a little bit of it over there that I had decorated. So I decided to just keep those pink colors in there and red, you know, just to celebrate us. Nails, of course, are there too. But anyway, um, so like sometimes you're, you know, your mate, your spouse will come and they'll bring in all of these sweet toots and everything. And, um, you know, it basically, you know, it, it, you know, it causes you to slip up because, you know, they are actually bringing you those things. And so you want to make sure that you, you know, you're, they're on board with you. Like, this is what I'm doing. So kind of like, help me along, you know, don't bring this in. You can maybe get treat me every now and then, but this is not something that I want to have like all the time. So it definitely helps. And I'm on the I'm right there with you. You know, if you want me to check in on you every now and then, I have no problem doing it because, you know, sometimes I will, you know, people say, you know, just be my check-in person. Because sometimes when you have somebody that you hold accountable, you know, for your, you know, your actions, it kind of helps encourage you. Because it's like, okay, they're probably going to be like, what's she up to now? So it helps. So I see Lorna's decor. Hello, 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 Lorna. That's one of my fellow uh, YouTube sisters over there. She has a beautiful decorating channel, as does um, Mondale from Johnson Home Decor. So if you have never checked them out, guys, be sure to check them out. So Lorna, we're talking about women and um, wellness. Health in women is a very important thing because like I was saying, if you're not healthy and you can't be there, then you can't be there for the people in your life. So it's not even just for us to discuss, it's also for them as well. So we talked about that and just kind of, kind of trying to put the right things, you know, clean things inside of your body, you know, trying to avoid things like junk food, you know, soda, and a lot of sugary sweets. Of course, you can treat yourself every now and then. You know, Valentine's just went recently. So, of course, 
you know, you may slip up a little bit here and there. Nothing wrong with it. I know like, like, you know, Thanksgiving and leading into, <clears throat> excuse me, leading into Christmas time can be very difficult for many people, you know, especially including me because there's just so many good things. And like I say, even like Thanksgiving that we celebrate over here in America, sometimes the sides, <laughs> people come more for the sides than they do for the turkey because that mac and cheese, that sweet potato casserole, sweet potato souffle, you know, all of those delicious, wonderful things that come out. And the way some people make them, they are just fully loaded. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, you have your um, potato, um, what do you call it now? Sweet potato casserole. It's already sweet. They already put sugar in it and they still put the little marshmallows on top. I'm just like, oh my goodness. So of course, when you've had it, you pretty much are ready to fall asleep. And then of course you wake up and you go for round two or whatever. But you know, the holidays can be kind of hard on us sometimes, you know, with dieting and so on. But like I said, you can always, you know, every now and then you may slip up or whatever, but you just want to make sure that you are actually, you know, just bearing that in mind and keeping a routine. And this is for me too, you know, we all have our slips up, slip, slip ups here and there. And I just wanted to show you, this is a good reminder right here, a very important part of your life since we're talking about diet would be these. I got a new laptop and it's a little bit brighter. So it's a little sheen on them. So I hope you can see them. But yes, you know, like these things here, they're really shiny. I hope you can see them good though. Because I prefer you to see me brighter than darker than how it was on my older laptop. But like apples, I talk about apples like all the time. We don't get these very much in Jamaica. Well, when I was there, we didn't. I know we had like a few of them here and there, but we didn't get a lot of these. I usually buy organic apples. That's one of the few things that I do make sure I buy organic. But this has what they call soluble fiber, and it's very, very good for you. And so, you know, it helps to keep you clean because as I say, and we, you know, I'm very frank on my lives because it's freestyle. You know, we talk about all kinds of topical things to help each other. And the fact is that if you are not regular in your motions, and I mean your bowel motions, that leads to all kinds of sickness in your body, you know, because when your colon is clean, then your body will be clean. Other things can come in, yes, and affect you, you know, radiations and different stuff like that. But for the most part, if your body, I mean, if your colon is clean, then your body will be clean and it helps you to fight diseases. So like apples, they have soluble fiber and it's very, very good for you. But of course, you want to make sure that you know the type that will work for you. Oh, I'm getting a call that I can't answer right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> But anyway, um, but like apples, they're very, very good for you. I see. Let's see. Uh, Lorna says it's a struggle for me and the soda, but I'm trying to do much better. And it's just, to, you know, to pace yourself because there may be some days when you're just like, I just can't do it today. And that's OK, because when you give yourself a break, that is what encourage you, encourages you to stay on track and to keep doing it. If you just kind of like, you know, hardcore going hard, cold turkey all the time, then it's, it's demotivating and it does make you want to continue. You feel like you just, this is not for me. I can't do it. So, you know, it's good to take a break every now and then, but just bear that in mind, you know, like, okay, I've done so-and-so and so I'm going to back off and try to get back on track. So Ade, Ade, I really hope I'm saying your name correctly. Hello, hello. I've not seen you on my last before. So an extra special welcome is coming out to you. And um, she says, hello, everyone. So, of course, as I always say on my chats, I love the interaction. So, guys, please feel free to interact with each other. You can greet each other. You can check out each other's channel. You can even put a heart beside your name so they know that you actually have a YouTube channel so they can always support. You can always make a note of it because sometimes, for whatever reason, my live chat doesn't become available after the fact. So you may not see it if you go to watch the replay. But if you just put a heart with your next comment, you know, that shows that, you know, you have a YouTube channel and we can always support you um, afterwards. So so hi, Ade, again. So um, Tiffany says, I love fruit, and I consider my diet to consist of mainly fruit. <laughs> LOL. Okay, well, good for you. That is awesome. And it says, I definitely love fruit smoothies, too. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You know, I'm so glad that they have that. I'm probably going to do a live one day and just make some, cook some healthy food for you. Maybe the next one might be that one like some of them that we used to do in Jamaica growing up, some of those smoothies that we didn't even call them smoothies, just call them like fruit punch or whatever, blend them out and they're so nice. I remember Monday has a second channel, a family channel. And she, um, I remember once she was there just, you know, processing the, uh, juicing her fruits. But some people prefer juicing, some prefer, um, you know, having the smoothies. Um, I'm not partial to either of them, but well, maybe I suppose I like smoothies a little bit more because it has a little bit more fiber in it for me. But yes, guys, so apples are absolutely good. If you can have them, great. 
Um, of course, bananas. Bananas don't work as well for me. A lot, I know a lot of people it does for them, but for some reason for me, bananas don't get me going as well. So whatever works for you. And the good thing is when you have it, have some water right behind it. That normally works because you really need to be regular. Every day it should be happening for you. And again, I'm not a doctor, but this is just, you know, standard information. That's all that I've taken into advice for myself. And I see where it has helped me a lot. Another thing, again, is like your oranges right here. You know, oranges are so good for you. They keep you healthy. They have a lot of vitamin C in there. And I'm sure there are a host, you know, of other fruits that we could talk about and vegetables too that help you. But definitely, you know, oranges. Because sometimes, and lemons too, they're very good. Because sometimes, even like if I feel like I might be going under the weather, that night when I come home, if I'm out, at, you know, in the office that week, because I'm on rotation at work, I'm not always there every week. But like if I'm out or even at church or at, out to dinner or whatever, and I'm not feeling a little so good when I come home, then what I will do is I will make some hot, um, have some hot lemon tea. I don't put, some people put honey in theirs. I don't sweet man at all. And I just have that just before I go to bed. And I'm telling you, it makes a very big difference. And it's really the vitamin C that's in there. And not only that too, when you drop it, when you make the lemon juice, just drop a slice of lemon or the orange in there because there's a lot of um, healthy products that's in the skin as well too, a lot of antioxidants in there that actually gives you that extra boost along with the juice from the lemons, limes, or whatever citrus you might be using. So that's just some of them that we're looking at there as far as, um, you know, fruit. So it's good to have fruits in your body. So let me see. So Neil Chin says, good evening, everyone. Hello, Neil. Good to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And Aneta says, I eat everything, but in moderation. I love decadent treats. <laughs> Aneta, let me just call you Marika. That's, that's the favorite name I have for you. You say, I eat everything, but in moderation. I, I Believe me, I understand. I love decadent treats, so I don't do juice or sugar in my tea and coffee. So I can have all my sugar in my treats. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. That helps a whole lot because, um, you know, when you cut back in one way, and you can splurge a little bit. And they say dark chocolate, too, is very good for you. But the only thing with dark chocolate is that if you just have, like, regular milk chocolate, you're not getting as much of the benefit. It's better to have, like, if you can have maybe, like, 75%. That's kind of maybe 83%, I think. And they have that one, too. It's kind of like my limit because anything over that... To me, it's just a little bit too bitter for me. You know what I mean? I'm just like, um, that's a little too strong. You can probably have it in another food, like put it in maybe something that you're, you know, you're mixing or baking and that way you get the benefit. But for me, 70, I think it's either 74 or 76, somewhere there. That's kind of like the perfect point for me. But chocolates are definitely good for you. So that could be your treat, you know, dark chocolates. If you like milk, well, Maybe you might get a little trace benefit here and there, but there is something better coming from that than some of the other stuff that we could be eating. So um, Neil says, that is true. You have to be careful with juices. Do not make them, I guess you mean too concentrated so that will not shock your kidneys. And that's true too, because sometimes, and when you're having even like juices, it's good to kind of like dilute them out a little bit sometimes because it can be, it's hitting you like at once instead of like when you're slowly eating a fruit. So you kind of pace yourself a little bit with that there. And he said, during this cold and flu season, do three times your vitamin C for the recommend, recommended um, daily allowance to build up immune system. Yes, I did that growing up and re really caught the cold. Yeah. So that definitely helps a lot. So yes, I would say for sure. Um, that's a good thing. So guys, you know, just try to eat healthy. And along next to eating is drinking, which is what we're going to come to next, which is water. So for me, honestly, I'm not going to lie. I am not someone who it's easy for me to drink water. You know, you can tell me in the chat if you are. My husband, he definitely is one of those people. He has a lot of water. It's very easy for him. My mom was that way too. She could just have a lot of water. She could just sit and drink a whole quart of water just like that. Me, um, one cup and I'm good to go. You know what I mean? But they say it's good to have like, you know, eight ounces of water per day. And so, you know, that's a good um, habit to have to try. And if you can't have, you know, like water, you know, just straight water as much as you should, at least try to um, <clears throat> try to see if you can have it like, you know, like in more fruits, you know, have more fruits that are juicy and, you know, more fluid and, you know, your vegetables and so on, because those also help to put water in your diet as well. But of course, you know, the clear water that you flush out is absolutely best for you, you know, so I sip my water as I go along. So um, Maverick says, I'm a bit... Let me see. Let me, I'm sorry. I'm skipping ahead. 
Okay. Yeah, so Maverick says, I'm a bit picky about water. Some brands I swear I drink, but never feel refreshed. Sometimes I feel more thirsty. Imagine that. Isn't that something? So I guess it depends on what they're putting in there, but that is definitely that definitely true that that can happen. You know, it depends on who is making it. And I'm not here to endorse any particular brand or anything, but, you know, water is definitely, definitely good for you. Um, if you want to buy, you know, because maybe the best option, because we have that we have a filter, so we filter and boil our water. So that way we're just doing that ourselves. And you can always, you know, they have so many water bottles that you can carry with you. So you can, you know, filter, boil your own water and you just take it along with you. And then that way, you know, you always have it. But if you find a brand that works well, if it quenches your thirst and you feel really good about it, then definitely I would say just stick to that if it works for you. So let me take a look here again. Tiffany says, water is one of the things that I struggle, I somewhat struggle with. I usually bring water to classes just so I do something, I have something to drink throughout the day, yes. And that's it too, when you carry water with you, you and you, you set it on your desk, whether you're at, in a class or you're at work or even at home or whatever, your workstation or the case may be, it's good to just put one there. So you're kind of like, okay, um, so it's kind of like one o'clock in the afternoon and I'm only like a quarter of a ways of what I thought I would have. And that's going to spur you on to drink it because if you don't see it, sometimes they say, you know, you even feel hungry and you're not hungry. You're actually thirsty. They say, go and drink some water. So you just kind of like block your mind a little bit, you know, go and have some water. And, you know, it, it, you realize that, you know, I really wasn't that hungry after all because I ate maybe like a hour and a half ago. So I'm really not hungry. I'm just kind of like peckish, as we would say in Jamaica. I'm not sure if anybody else uses that phrase, but we say, I feel a little peckish, like you just want to go peck on something, but you're really not hungry. So you have a little water and it pushes you along. So definitely, yes, I would say try with the water, especially um, Tiffany, you mentioned your health situation earlier that will be such a plus for you in your life. And again, I'm not a doctor, but just from, you know, research that we do and information that we get from trusted sources, the water will help in your situation to help to just flush you on out and keep you, you know, healthier. So definitely try that. So Lorna says, I drink, Did you, is that five 16 ounce bottles per day? Please reply and tell me, um, Lorna, if that is true. You drink five 16 ounces? What is that? So that's five. So that means you're doing 10 because they normally say um, that you can have eight and you're pretty much good to go. But you're doing five. Is that five times 16, Lorna? Please let us know. I'd really love to know, because if that is the case, either way, even if, you know, I mean, hats off to you. Absolutely. So Tiffany says, I feel like I'm not drinking enough some days, true. And especially when the weather is warm. Oh, my goodness. And we start sweating a lot because now it's kind of cooler well, depending on where you are, if you're in Australia, because I do have, you know, a friend from Australia that watches my lives um, and one of my co-subscribers. So depending on where you are in the world, maybe, you know, it might be, you know, warmer there for you now. So you're not sweating. But for most of us right now in this season, we are sweating. We're not sweating that much. So it's even harder to drink the water that you need to flush out your body. So, you know, definitely, definitely um, try to do, you know, set it where you are so you can sit and it's going to encourage you. And of course, there are different people that have different needs for water too, because you can have what they call water toxicity, which means that you're drinking too much. Because I remember they had a challenge on a radio show once. It was some kind of um, game for kids that the lady was trying to win for her son. And they had a challenge where they were supposed to drink water, like it was a gallon or five or something in a very short window. And she drank it and she actually got water toxicity. And I think she either got very sick or she died. I'm not sure. And I don't want to give false information, but you can drink too much water. So, you know, bear that in mind as well. There's always a balance for everything. So Tiffany says, um, so I did discuss yours already. So Marie says, Aneta says, I boil my water now. We definitely do. Once we had Hurricane Gilbert in Jamaica and we were living back down there, this was over 20 years ago, <clears throat> my household and a couple of people started to boil water and we just never stopped doing it. Since I came over here, then we also started, and this is in the U.S., we just started to do it like all the time. Some people have a filtration system hooked up and then they boil it from there. Whatever works for you, we use the one that we just, it's kind of like a large canister. We just put the things in there and have it filter off and then we just boil our water afterwards. So that works very well for us. So let's see. Bruce Lee says, just adding a bit of lemon lime juice. And yes, and that's another thing that got very popular just before the pandemic. And it was called infused water. You would even see people bringing it to work and they have it sitting on their desk. They'll have the water 
and then they'll go ahead and they'll put maybe like some fruits in there, maybe like some you know um, lemon slices, maybe like some orange slices. I've seen people put strawberries in there. They put cut blueberries in there and it goes out in the water. And that way it's not just the water, it flavors the water. And so it's easier for them to have it that way. So, you know, whatever works for you, but just try, I beseech you and I'm beseeching myself as well, because that's a weak point for me right there and it's drinking enough water. Your body needs it to flush out all the toxins that are in there. So if you even say can exercise, which we'll touch on a little bit shortly, but and if you can't get to exercise, at least, you know, hydrate your body because we're mostly water, you know, we're mostly water and the organs, they need water to function properly because if you're dehydrated, then it affects your heart, it affects your liver, it affects your kidney, it affects your brain, you know, all over on your body. It affects your skin, which is the largest organ, all of those things. So I would say definitely water is very, very important. As they say, water is life. There's a slogan that says it. I'm not sure who came up with it, but I, you know, it's a very big part of it for sure. So let's see. So Boosty says that helps to rehydrate and cool you better, also lowers your body pH. Okay, so... Marie says, I have water with all my meals, but still not drinking nearly enough. I drink hot or warm water too. I've heard that warm water fights against lots of illnesses. And yes, it is very helpful. That's what I've heard. And I also heard that um, it's good to have a glass of water, like when you just wake up in the morning to kind of like flush you out, get you going for the day. And even they say like before you go into the shower, and this is just hearsay, um, they're saying that if you have water, like a glass or even a half a glass of water before you go to um into the shower and it helps to lower your blood pressure. I'm not sure if that's proven, but I have heard that. One thing I know that my mom always did was she always, and you can tell me, some of you are from the islands. You can tell me if your mom or even you growing up, if you always had a glass of water on your nightstand because that was a must for her. Every single night, she always had a glass of water. And I started doing it once I went on my own. I never did it growing up, but once I, you know, came, you know, got on my own and I did every night to make sure it's there. Because sometimes you can wake up with a heartburn. You know, you can um, maybe need to take a pill, especially if you're in a two-story building. I do not want to go down the stairs at night to go get water. So I always make sure it's right on my bed night stand, my water, and it's there for me. So if I need it, sometimes you just get thirsty. You sleep awake, you get thirsty. You may use the restroom. You know, you get water out, you get some back water in to keep flushing. So, you know, that's really good for you. So let me see. So um, Anita says, let me see. No, Lorna says, yes, the doctor tell me I have problem with the bathroom. Okay, yes. Yeah. So the water is definitely very important, Lorna. So you're doing good. So just keep going and you'll, you're definitely an inspiration to the rest of us. So Brucey says, well, Lorna, I need to get back to that. I used to do a gallon. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> How much is eight gallons? Can, I mean, eight cups per day. Is that a gallon? My math is off, so I'm not too sure. But I know that um, eight, eight cups of eight cups per day, if you're on that, then you're pretty good. But a gallon, it just sounds like so much. <laughs> but, you know, just, you know, and you can just ease into it. You may not be able to just start right away to say, okay, I'm going to start right away and start to, you know, have a lot of water. But, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe you might have four per day. They can get up to five, six and get to eight. And you can even go over that a little bit if you can. Yes, and he did say that. He said, but in portion uh, throughout the day, absolutely. And she says, yes, Bruce, I do. Okay, so um, so that's as far as, you know, the foods, hydration. If I missed anything, guys, and you wanted to add them in, please feel free to add them because we have a lot of things to discuss because one of the major topics tonight, and um, Tiffany, I know you're younger, but it doesn't matter. At some point, you know, you it's good information for you. It's going to be a lot about perimenopause because a lot of my subscribers um, they are actually at the age where they're going to be approaching it sooner. They're in it already, or it's a little bit behind them. But we welcome younger people who want your perspective. And honestly, if you set all of these patterns in place, sometimes it helps to prevent some of those things from happening later on in life to you. But the next thing is exercise. And this is like water. Me drinking enough water exercise is a bit of a challenge for me too. I am an active person. I move around a lot. Like I'm in my garden the growing season. And I try to clean a lot. And, you know, sometimes I'll, you know, my, maybe walk a little bit or stuff like that. But usually I'm doing it inside the house. You know, like you have videos you can watch, you do exercises. And sometimes I just go up and down the stairs, up and down the stairs, up and down the stairs. Because the biggest thing is to keep moving. You know, somebody said that anything that is not moving is dead. I'd say not dead, but it could become dead if it's not moving. Because you really need to keep moving. When you keep moving, you basically have your blood flowing, you inhale and exhale, your body is picking up a lot more oxygen, and that's what your body needs to keep you, you know, in a healthier state. Because most diseases, they like when your body 
it doesn't have enough oxygen, as well as when the pH of your body is low, it's acidic. Your body fights off diseases better if you have one, you know, they like when you're dehydrated, so it's good to stay hydrated as the first thing. The second one is to keep moving to exercise to keep your blood oxygenated, you know, rich in oxygen. And then the next one is to make sure that you, um, you know, you are moving, you know, so oxygen, um, keep your body in that kind of a negative pH. And, you know, there are things that lemon juice, you know, lemon teas, those things that are acidic, when they say when they go inside of your body, they become alkaline. And you can even do your own research. There's also alkaline water that you can drink to, to help you with that. But these things help to ward off diseases. So exercise. And honestly, you know, it's hard for many of us. It's hard for me. Sometimes there's a lot of New Year's resolutions out there. I'm going to start exercising this year. I'm going to sign up for the gym. And then by the time February reaches towards the end, most people have fallen off of the cart, but you can always try to do it, you know, in different ways. Um, you know, some, some of us, maybe it's just dancing, you know, you can maybe put on a dance video and you can just start dancing to it, learn some new moves and all of that. And you'd be surprised you're moving. It's a regular action. You know, you have different patterns that you're doing and it actually helps you. And honestly, I think it's more fun. Some people, they may have, and sometimes, I don't know, for some people, maybe, you know, you find that maybe even some of the exercise equipment, that it may be kind of intimidating. You look and you're just like, oh, there's a Stairmaster. There's a this, there's a that, you know? And it kind of just sits over there and it's kind of like, I don't know. But if you just, you know, put your TV on, you have YouTube videos, just go on there, maybe like learn a dance move or dance with, you know, somebody who's teaching something or, you know, just pull up one of the, there was this one that I did one time. It was, um they had one that was sit and be fit. So even people, you know, I'm not exaggerating, I'm excluding anybody. Maybe you can't walk around and move, but if you are able to um, to just sit and do exercises, you know, sit in bed or even if you're lying down, there's still things that you can do with your upper body so that there is still that flow of your blood and you're still keeping healthy. But it was one of them was called sit and be fit. And um, it was basically just her, you know, um, sitting all the time. I'm not sure if she, you know, had, you know, challenges walking or whatever, but everything that she did, she was sitting down. And that's what the exercise were using her hand, twisting her body, her head, her neck, you know, up and down and all those things. And it made a very big, very, very big impact on her life. And you could see it, you know, so it just depends. And, you know, like I said, you know, there are different things that you can do. There's another one, walk a mile, just pull up, walk a mile and you just have you walk, go to the left, to the right. You're walking right, same place in your room, but you're moving and that you're sweating a good sweat, getting all of, you know, those toxins out of your body. And that goes such a long way. So let me see. I may be falling behind a little bit on the chat here. So he says, that is true. It shows in your skin and hair and eyes. So stay hydrated. We are 60% of water of the body and 70% heart is water. Yes. And then um, Marie says, I just started the gym. Been procrastinating for a while. I feel so much healthier. Yay, Marie. Awesome. I'm so happy for you. And I don't know, maybe it's just like getting in the car and going somewhere is a bit of a challenge for me. So basically, you know, it's probably going to be easier for me to start at home. But maybe at some point, you know, I will get to that point. You know, my sons, they're a little bit better on that than I am, like, you know, going to somewhere physically and doing it. But yes, you know, it's definitely, you know, there and it helps to encourage you and keep you going. So I'm very, very happy that you're doing that. And she said, also building muscle and ultimately strength. And that's the next thing, too. Like, as we get older, you tend to need to build up your muscles, you know, to strengthen your muscles a little bit more than when you were a little bit younger. So, you know, that definitely is a very important part. They call it, what is it like? Strength, strength training, um, weight training, where you kind of like, you know, and since I did mention dance, Tiffany, you, Tiffany is your minor, that's your minor, dancing is your one of your minors in college. So even that dancing that you're doing, that actually is helping you a lot, not just, you know, for your profession that you may want to pursue, but also it is helping to keep you healthier and to keep things moving inside of your body. So, so Ade says, I need to improve with exercises. Yeah, and you know, you know, it's not for us to be hard on ourselves, to be critical of anyone or everything. We all have our own different challenges, but basically, you know, it's just to take that first step, maybe just once per week. You could just do it once per week. Maybe you have a park nearby that is safe for you and you can just go out and go walking. And then, you know, that goes a very, very far way for you. So, just start off a little bit and then you pick up as you go along. So Bruce Lee says, do it while you are able as that allows you to age more gracefully. Absolutely, 100%. Because it's a little bit harder. It's a little bit more of a challenge as you get older. 
It also says it helps you to sleep better through, better focused and study better. Absolutely. And also to another part of your, your whole um, self-care is basically like what you put on your skin. You know, be careful of some of the stuff that you put on your skin because they say, you know, um, remember that things get absorbed through your skin as well. And it's called transdermal absorption. There was a doctor, I think he probably exaggerated a little bit, but he was saying like, if you wouldn't eat it, then you shouldn't put it on your skin. I think that's a little extreme, especially for us women, because, you know, we'll wear makeup and stuff like that. But just be careful of the stuff that you're putting in, you know, in, you know, on your skin and make sure that they're healthy and you check them out because, you know, there are so many different things that are out there and you want to make sure that they're OK. Because, you know, even on this YouTube channel, I've had a couple of people reach out to me to promote like makeup. But from the sponsored videos that I do, you can see that I really I only promote things that I actually use myself. And I can say this actually works. I am OK with it. Because, you know, again, you know, it's going through your skin, you're putting on different makes so make sure that, you know, you feel comfortable about some of the stuff that you're using, you know, to enhance your beauty. And I'm all for that. I'm definitely, you know, for you going and just making sure that you put your best foot forward, look as best as you can. Some people don't like makeup. Some people are good with it. Some wear it a little bit lightly, like myself, whatever works for you. But, you know, it's about putting your best foot forward because when you feel like you're looking good, it changes your attitude a lot and it makes you feel better like you want to go out and engage and just you know have a healthy lifestyle and a healthy mindset which is also another important part you know of your life as well so that's as far as you know putting stuff on your body so and if you're just coming in you know be sure to give me a thumbs up um it helps the video to go out to other people as well so they can get this information even after the video you know the um the replay that's available because there are a few ladies who typically join me and they said that you know, for different reasons, they're not able to join tonight. So I know they'll be coming in on the replay, but your thumbs up can just go off the live chat, hit the thumbs up and come back on the live chat. I don't mean like exit in the video, but just to, you know, click on the thumbs up because it does help and it will help other people to get this information as well. So the next thing is um, like your medical checkups, you know, medical checkups. Um, let me just send a text excuse me a second guys i need to just send a text really quick to my um to my husband so in the meantime you guys can just chat to each other on the chat because i do need to get this information over to him and it's a little bit urgent but you can talk to each other on the chat Okay, so I think he is going to get that message. I just texted it to him. He's nearby, but there's something he needs to check on. So let me see what you guys are saying just before I proceed. Um, Tiffany says, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, Jared has definitely been encouraging me to go to the gym more often, and I appreciate that honesty. Uh, I hope it's in a sweet way, though, you know. <laughs> and you look, you're look, you the picture of health anyway, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate that honesty because I feel as though I need that push exercise more. Yes. But I hope it's in a very a kind and very gentle way because it can be a very touchy subject for people because it's not easy for people who that's already in there. And the thing is like, you know, exercise, once you start doing it, it's kind of like going, going, going. But for you to get past that point, it's, you know, it's not easy. You know, it's not easy at all. So anyway, um, let me see what else we have here. It says, I'm very cautious of my skincare products. Absolutely. Um, I have severe acne. That was me too. I've even had acne. I mean, like reaching 50 and still getting acne. I'm just like, seriously, I'm supposed to be, <laughs> that's supposed to be behind me right now. <laughs> I was what you call a late bloomer. So when all of my friends in high school, we start high school in the seventh grade. From the seventh grade, we're having pimples already. You're like, how is it that your skin is so clean and so clear and everything? I was like, I don't know. I'm not doing anything different. And so I was a late bloomer. But then by the time I got to like, you know, we call it sixth form in Jamaica. It's like the 12th and 13th grade. By the time I got there, all of a sudden, it's just like, where did all of this come from? And, you know, I've had acne back and forth in my life. But like I said, I figured once I got maybe like to my 40s, stopped having children, I wouldn't have acne anymore. But every now and then, especially if I eat certain things, it's like, hello. And then sometimes they come up in the weirdest places, like on your forehead, like on your chin. It's just like, could you just go like up here where nobody can see it? <laughs> Tiffany, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, but certainly um, that can be a bit of an issue as well. So you said I'm still in the process of cleaning up my skin and I limit makeup as well. Exactly. So, you know, work, do what works for you in that regard. So Neil says, cool, enjoy. 
All right. So the next thing that we're going to talk about medical checkups, and that's a very important part. And this is where, you know, like I spoke with um, the lives that we had last week, my husband was on that live with me. We're talking about relationships, you know, keeping them healthy and happy. And a part of it was that, you know, men who are, um, you know, married they are, you know, in a, you know, committed relationship with someone, they find that they tend to, you know, discover diseases earlier in their body because the women in their life push them to go to the doctor because for the most part, and my husband is one of those people too in that category, men, they don't like to go to the doctor a lot, especially like for certain type of routine checkups, you know, and the same thing is true for us because sometimes we don't want to do them, but it's better for you to go and do it. And you know what is wrong with you and they can catch it early and that way you can properly treat yourself. And then that way you can basically, you know, you can, um, you can help yourself. You know, you can you can improve your situation. You sit and you wait. Yeah, I don't want to hear what it is, but then it's not gonna go away. You could get divine healing. Yes, that's definitely a part of it. But most times, you know, God says faith without works is dead. So you have to do the work. And I'm saying this to myself too. You know, we have to do the work and then go out and get checked. I'm not saying check for either. I have a pimp. Let me go check it. You know what makes sense? If you're feeling pain and it's not going away, maybe something you need to check. Like your, you know, well, not annual because you're doing them less frequently, you know, like your mammograms and your pap smears, you know, maybe because what I do is like I try to do mine, you know, in the month that I was born in my birth month. So I know that, OK, you know, it's December. So it's that time of year when I need to, you know, schedule my annual physical, you know, my pap smear if applicable, because now they, they're doing it like every three years, which I'm just like, yay, <laughs> what less things to worry about every year, which means I have to get my reminders to go and do them from them. But nevertheless, you know, it's that time to do the pap smear if it's applicable for that year. It's, you know, applicable to do your, um, I mean, your mammograms, you know, get those checked and everything. Yes, it's uncomfortable, but when they check early, they can intervene early. And that way, you know, you, you, you know, you stand a better chance of having a good outcome. So um, Neil says, men do not like needles are to be poked. Absolutely true. But yes, thanks to the wives to help us to do this. Absolutely. And especially the colonoscopy and the pap smear test from, I mean, not the pap smear, I'm sorry, the, the prostate exam for men. So funny, they both start with P, the one that we all hate. But the prostate exam and the colonoscopy for men, you know, they absolutely don't like those. So we really have to encourage them. And I understand where they're coming from. It's very invasive, but... That's what they have to use right now to tell you if you have it or not. So even though this is a chat for women, the men in our lives, we want them to be there and to be healthy. And this is not necessarily for, say, your husband or your whatever. It could be for your father. It could be for your brother. It could be for your son if you're, you know, you're older and your child is old enough. Because, of course, you have age limits. Like, I think for the um, for men, for the prostate, I think it's age 40. Because I remember having to be on my husband, you know, go get it on, go get it on. Till eventually he gave in. And then I think the colonoscopy, well, for all of us, the colonoscopy is um is age 50. They start recommending that you do it. And of course, there are also the issues of vaccines. You know, I'm not a proponent for some of them, but there's some of them that I think are important to us. Uh, because recently um I did my I got my shingles vaccine on Monday of this week. Because once you get to 50, your doctor keeps every time you go back, they're like, Are you gonna do it? So I'm just like, okay. So I, I had scheduled it last. I mean, they had told me they didn't have enough in December. So they said, we'll let you know. And then they had let me know. And I forgot. But you know how it is in December, New Year's, kind of like in a whole different frame of mind. But I took my son to the doctor on Monday. I took a day off from work and I took him to the doctor and I saw the big poster and I said, oh, my gosh, I forgot to get my shingles vaccine. And so I took it. And my body is very sensitive. So I tend to, um, you see, now I'm getting warm, so I'm sure you can figure where that is coming from, right? <laughs> Which we'll, we'll be discussing that topic quite a bit in a few minutes. But anyway, um, sorry about that jerk. But anyway, um, I saw the poster and I took it and, um, you know, it. I'm, my body is sensitive, like I was saying. So I do, you know, it kind of bothers me, you know, my, you know, like tenderness in the area, little achiness. And so I'm still a little bit of that, but it's going to phase out because it has been. So I know that even though it affects me that way, it's better for me because shingles, I've known a couple of people, especially like at my church, we have a lot of older people there and a couple of them have had it. And it, it was really bad. When I tell you, it put them down. I'm just like, oh, my gosh, I need to get mine done. And they said it's a two-part. So I did the first one on Monday. And then they said anywhere from two to six months, I can get the second one. So I said I'll probably see in about four or five months because I don't like putting vaccines too close together. And that's just me personally. But um, some of them, you know, 
I'm not going to say get every vaccine that's out there. That's your decision. There's some of them that I personally don't take, but you know, there's some of them that I figure that they are important to you. And so I'll go ahead and get them those. So that, that was for my shingles vaccine that I did. So let me see. I don't want to miss you guys' comments in the chat. So let me see here. Oh, so Neil said 45, which is the recommended age. I'm guessing that that's for the prostate exam. Tiffany says, I'm a champ when it comes to needles. I remember having eight little tubes of blood taken out for testing. It definitely hurt a little because a nurse ripped the needle. Well, that was not very nice, but, um, but manageable. Yes, yeah, so definitely. So I hope that they'll be more kinder to you next time that you go. But for sure, you know, you want to get all of these things done, get your checkups done, so that way you can be on board and you can, um, you know, just live your best life, you know, be there. Because healthcare is expensive. It's kind of expensive going for some of these checkups if you're not covered in certain ways, because sometimes you have to come out of pocket for certain things. But nevertheless, when you get sick, not when, but if you get sick with certain diseases, it costs you so much more for that care that you need. So it's better to start early and then get things detected and then, you know, go ahead and take it from there so he says hats off to you tiffany she said lol absolutely so then the next topic is gray here it's just a light subject you know because eventually we are all gonna get there if god spares you know are you tarries as we say so gray hairs is another another um topic that i just wanted to look at just to see how you all feel about gray hairs do you like gray hairs do you not like gray hairs and, you know, you know, this is open, you know, people can discuss their opinion. We're quite fine with all of that. But me personally, um, I, I like gray hair. Um, I don't have a lot, maybe like about 10. And honestly, I, when I was in college, I thought maybe by, by the time I got to 40, I would have been like salt and pepper street because I, I had a lot of them. Like when I was in a lot of part of high school, like the 12 to 13 grade, I started getting streaks in the middle. And then, um, when I got to college, there was a lot more of them. But then after I graduated from college and they fell out and they didn't grow back. And it's just now that I'm kind of getting, you know, a few here and there. Could probably count on one hand, which is, you know, for my age, I'm in my 50s. So that's kind of like unusual for most people. But my dad, you know, has a lot of black hair. He's in his late 80s. And right now he still has a few um, strands of black hair in his head. You can actually see that he's still kind of like white, but there is some black in there. But my mom, rest her soul, she had an early gray and I just loved her here. You know, I just absolutely love it. And the thing is that when you're, you know, your hair is gray and you have a nice haircut, it just looks so beautiful. Sometimes I'll be like in the grocery store or somewhere else and I'll see women that they have gray hairs. And I'll tell them, I say, your hair looks so beautiful. It's so gorgeous, you know, but everybody has their preference. So if you're a person that prefers to color yours, then more power to you because it's what you are comfortable with what works for you and what makes you feel that you are your best person. You know what I mean? So whatever works for you, then I would say go for it. There's nothing wrong with, there is no right or wrong answer. So let me see now. Tiffany says, I have a lot of them, maybe because of stress. And that's what I was explaining to you earlier, because when I was in the 12th and 13th grade in high school, I had quite a few streaks in here. When I got to college, I said, oh my gosh, because my mom had an early grace. I said, well, by the time I get to maybe like about my mid 30s, I'm going to be like salt and pepper. But I'm cool with it. And, you know, a trend in a couple of years ago, you know what was going on? The younger women who were like, I'm not sure if it's phaser because I'm not really like on top of all of these, you know, fashionable things or whatever in every aspect. But there were some younger ladies, you know, like in their 20s and so on. They were going and getting their hair to look gray. Or some of them would even go and you know, maybe like wear the gray hair pieces and all of those things. So they were doing all of that, you know? So, um, you know, some people like it, some people don't, whatever works for you. As long as you put your best foot forward, have your hair, you know, trim nice and healthy looking, then that is perfectly fine. So, but mine, like I said, it actually, when I left college, you know, I started to relax a little bit more, you know, lots of studying and everything. Then after a while, you know, they fell out and they never came back. So there's hope for you, Tiffany, <laughs> if that's what you want. Anyway, I mean, I would have been fine if it had changed, because my mom was my, um, you know, she's my hero from day one. <laughs> so um, so I, it didn't matter to me, honestly. Um, so Aneta says, I have grays, but because my hair is not jet black, they get camouflage. <laughs> All right. I can hear, because she's a redhead, you know, like my younger son. My younger son has red hair, 
And so she's a redhead. So hers, you know, it doesn't show. I mean, it's not like bright red, but her hair is red. So you can still see that she's a redhead. And of course, you know, it won't show as obviously somebody who has, you know, like, because my hair is like a very dark brown. Because like when I sit by my sister, um, and I'm surprised she's not on the chat. She was supposed to come on here. She's probably having um, some connectivity issues or something. But her, she has jet, well, they say nobody has black hair. There's single strand. But looking at her hair, her hair was always a lot darker than mine. But my hair looks black and I can see them. So, you know, it varies based on the shade. But even people with blonde hair, it's not as obvious, you know, on them either. So let's see. So Brucey says, gray hair in the nose. <laughs> oh my gosh, gray hair in the nose. Well, yes, I'm sure if it's there, you probably have to do something to get those taken care of. But, you know, different places. She says, um, we finish off. I'm not, Lorna, I'm not. Oh, she took it off because I wasn't sure what you were saying. If you could put that again for me, that would be so wonderful. So Neil says, once the stress goes, the black hair comes back. Sometimes I had a coworker that had had that happen to him. So it went away and then it came back. Creatively miss me. Hello, hello, Stephanie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you could join us. We're talking about wellness in women. And she's one of our fellow creators. And like I was saying, guys, if you would like to, if people to follow your channel on here, you can just put a heart by your comment whenever you put another one on the chat. Put a little red heart. You can just type the word heart. The heart pops up. You just click on it, the emoji if you want to do it that way. Or you can put, um, well, whatever you prefer. But a heart it could be like a two eyes, two heart, our, um, heart eyes or just a heart. So we know you have a channel and we can always follow along with you on that. So Stephanie, welcome, welcome, welcome. And Stephanie, you're in my prayers. I hope you don't mind me saying it, but her mother, you know, um, is having some health challenges right now. So it's a little bit of a difficult time for her. So you are definitely in my prayers and we're supporting you. We're behind you 100% because we are talking about wellness too. So that's a perfect, um, you know, lead into our segue for that as well. So hello, Neil Price. I see you on here. He says, ball for life. That's Marie's husband. <laughs> That's Aneta's husband. He said, ball for life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad you could join me. And guess what? You know who made ball cool? Michael Jordan. I'm just, and, and Charles Barkley, you know, back in those days when we were, you know, we used to watch a lot of basketball with my brothers, you know, growing up and everything. And my sister was a part of that too. Um, I'm, um, husband, if you can reach out to my sister and check up and see, because this chat is really important for her too. So I hope you could reach out to her and just ask her to join and you can send the link out to her if you can, please. But yeah, so Michael Jordan and Charles Brackley, those guys, they made it cool. And I'm sure they're, and you know, as the years went by, that comb over thing that was going on for a lot of men out there, they say, let's just take the whole thing off. And they took it off and guess what? It made them look, some of them, it took like 10 years off. It's just like, what were you waiting for? You know, just take it off and just have it look like that. So it's nice and healthy looking good and all of that. So more power to you, man, more power to you. So um, so let me see. She said, sorry, I was texting my son. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Gotcha, gotcha. So anyway, so okay, so Kraylee Miss Me, she put a heart by hers for YouTube. Yeah, so her channel is about YouTube tips and more because we do have fellow creators that come on even afterwards. So it's Creatively Miss Me and YouTube tips. And she does give you tips for YouTube growth. Or if you maybe, you know, you wanted to start a YouTube channel or maybe to improve on the skills that you have or whatever, even in other areas, because you could be on other social platforms and what she's telling you can even help you on those other ones as well, too. So that's her right there. Lorna also has a channel as well. So let's see. So Marie says, yep, I love my bald head, too. <laughs> More power to you. Whatever works for you, man. Ladies, don't go follow them, though. Okay. <laughs> So we're just talking about gray hairs and all of that. So that's the next topic. And of course, if you wanted to color your hair, that's up to you. I just, I just love, especially if the woman has darker skin. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you, I just love it. And I tell him all the time, I say, you're here, especially like I said before, you know, like you get that nice trim, you trim the hair and it looks really, you know, healthy and nice and everything. I'm just like, your hair is so beautiful to me. I tell him all the time. And it brings us smiles in your face because some, sometimes some are kind of like questioning, but even at my church, you know, we're, we're a mixed church in terms of, you know, um, what is it, ethnicity. And a lot of the ladies there are from both sides, you know, some of them, once a the pandemic came and some of them would go and get their hair, used to get their hair colored all the time at their hairstylist and they couldn't get to go. And I said, you know what? I'm not gonna try to fight with it. I'm just gonna grow it out. And they grew it out and I'm telling you, most of them, a few of them went back, but most of them, they never looked back. They just kept going with the gray and they love it and it looks good, you know? So, but again, whatever works for you, if you wanna color your hair, 
more power to you. I like to see it either way. As long as your hair is looking healthy, you know, because you're putting healthy stuff inside. And we talk about the different foods, you know, about exercise and getting your medical checkups and all of that. So if you're putting healthy stuff in, it helps you to be healthier. And I, even though I stressed it before, I'm going to do it again to make sure that you have enough, um, especially soluble fiber. Fiber, soluble and insoluble, both are good. But soluble fiber, it helps you to, you know, be regular. And the other one too, you know, you have your apples, you know, your oranges, you know, your bananas, you know, make sure that you're having, you know, at least try to get to at least eight cups of water per day if you can. If you can do a little bit more, then more power to you. So Tiffany says, I've been trying to grow my hair, but then I tried twisting my hair more. Now my hair is down to my back and I've never felt happier. All right. And then she's younger too. So of course, there's more of that growth taking place. So she said, what about alopecia? Oh, of course. You know, because, and that's something that not even that you're doing. And there are women who are comfortable doing their hair like that. That's fine, you know. But, you know, there are people who lose their hair. And that is very, very, you know, uh, you know, a very serious health condition. And so if that is the case and you want to make sure that, you know, you feel secure in whatever it is, you know, that's who you are. That's your persona. And you want to be as comfortable as possible in what you are. Some people, they have it stay the way. Some people, they wear wigs, whatever works for you because everybody has their challenges in life. And again, some people, they're taking chemotherapy. You know, they're taking chemotherapy and they lose their hair. Right? It starts falling out. And for most people, because my mom, she had of ovarian cancer, rest her soul. That was so hard for me, right? But when she took the chemo, she lost some of her hair. And so she went and she had it cut lower so it wouldn't be so obvious. And she still had some hair on her head. And that was her. You know what I mean? So it just all depends on your situation and what works for you. But it's just the main thing is just to be comfortable in yourself, be happy, and put your best foot forward. That is what matters the most. What's going on inside of your mind, inside of your heart, your spirit, and your soul, and of course, your body. They all work together, and you want to be in that happy place. So there are many challenges out there that people face. And it's really how you deal with it and try to get a community behind you that supports you because there are support groups for different challenges, whether it's, that you, you know, you're on chemo, they have groups for that, alopecia, they have groups for that, all these other things, you know, even like you have an aging parent or something like that, you know, all those things are out there as challenges, but, you know, we're there, we have people that support us. So as I'm talking about support and everything, um, let me see what Neil said. Nice. I see someone who soaks flax seeds in water and then use it for her hair. And it is much stronger and longer, she says. And I've heard of that too. Some people, they'll soak the flax seed in water, like soak it for a day or two. And then they use it as a rinse once the hair has been washed. And it actually gives them happier and even well, not happier, it gives them healthier hair and they're quite happy with it. So, and that's a good natural way to like an organic way to treat your hair. So on here now we have um, Andrea's kidney transplant. Like she says, hi, Marlene. Hi, <laughs> that is my sister, Andrea. And she has, has actually started a very, very brand new um, channel. It's called Andrea's Kidney Transplant Life. She is actually um, a successful kidney transplant patient. She did it short, just before the pandemic, which thank God it worked out that way for her. Just a few months in um, later, in the latter part of 2019, and she's going to be chronicling her journey. You probably saw with a few lives with me. So you can always go back and watch, especially the one that was the thrift haul that I did to hear a little of her story as a background. But she did release her channel trailer. So it's Andrea's Kidney Transplant Live. And you can put a heart by your comments if you're putting any more so they can see it in the chat and they'll know that you have a channel that they can check out. So her channel trailer is out. You can check on it. And um, she's going to chronicle all of her kidney, um, you know, stories that she had, you know, the challenges that she had, how she overcame them in the hopes that it's going to help a lot of people out there who are in similar situations. So if that's ever been an issue for you, if it's a case where you, um, if it's a case where you, you know, have somebody in your family that had that, you know, you just discovered you have that issue or you were successful and you wanted to just, you know, you know, exchange ideas and stuff, her channel is coming up with all of that. So be sure to check her out. And, um, you know, you can always, you know, subscribe to her. So it's Andrea's Kidney Transplant Life. And again, her channel trailer is out so you can check on it and, you know, show her some support. And I'll probably have her on a few lives with me going forward because she has been on a couple, just depending on when I figure it's appropriate or when she's available so that that way she can, um, 
you know, she can help to get her information out there. All right, so we're gonna be looking at um, perimenopause, which has so many things to discuss on there. Like I said, even if you're younger, it doesn't matter. Um, eventually, at some point, you know, you will get to it. And I'd say even it's good to have this discussion with us right now and also with your mother. Um, you know, if you're a female on here, men don't leave, but you can still stay on. It's perfectly fine. We like having you on here. And it kind of helps you to understand to what we're going through. So you're able to cope with us a little bit better and kind of like help us a little bit um, to get to, to navigate this process. So they're actually, the, what the list that I found, and I actually had experienced quite a few of them, I'm kind of like more towards, you know, almost coming out of perimenopause right now, but it, I'm not fully out because you saw me getting warm earlier and I had to get my fan <laughs> and start fanning. So I'm not completely out of the woods yet, but I'm getting there. So anyway, basically they're saying that you are actually officially in menopause when you have stopped, you know, having that monthly show cycle for a full 12 months. So ladies, word to the wise, if you are, cause some people they start very early, they may start like maybe say from they are, I had a coworker, she started, she started at 29. That's really early. I had another one who started at 30. She was of Asian descent, very nice friend to my mom. And then she migrated, but she says that she actually started at age 30 and her husband gave her a very hard time. It actually ruined their marriage because of it, because he just couldn't understand why <clears throat> that was happening to her at such a young age. So it starts at varying ages, but in most cases, it typically starts around the time that your mother is started. So if your mom is still alive and you've never had a discussion and you haven't been through it yet, it would be good to talk to her about it to see like when she started and then you can have an idea, you know, because we're not all exactly alike, but just to have a ballpark as to when that might happen for you. So let me see. Let me talk to this. Stephanie says, my goal is a gallon of water per day and a walk for more health. Absolutely. And we did talk a lot about water earlier. So that's definitely a good place to start. And if you can't get to walk, at least have the water to flush your system out and all of those fruits and veggies that we talked about. I'm just going to take a little pause before I go a little further, though, just to promote my channel a little bit. This is Marlene's How To's that you're on. This is one of my live videos. Uh, my channel is really a gardening channel. I do a little bit of decorating every now and then, especially around the holiday season, but it's mostly about gardening. But my live videos are basically about whatever is topical. Women's Day is coming up shortly. I felt this is perfect for this. It's also a spinoff from the previous live that I did with my husband where he talked about relationships and how even perimenopause can actually affect your, you know, your home life and, you know, your relationship with your spouse, um, you know, in a very, very serious way. And so we thought, okay, with those two um, different reasons, it seemed very appropriate to discuss that today. So the lives are topical, but please feel free to check out my live videos, my shorts, whenever you can. If you have never subscribed to my channel before, please hit the subscribe button, tap the notification bell. It should show black and say all so that way, whatever. That doesn't mean you have to watch all of my videos. It just means that whenever one comes out, then they will try to notify you. It still doesn't always guarantee it, but it's more likely that you will get notifications that I put a video out. I do videos weekly. I'm trying to stick to that since the year started and to stick to my garden as well gardening topics, you know, fresh flowers, if I'm arranging them. And so that's kind of what I'm doing right now. And also we have a, a video that's coming up, a collaboration on this Friday. It's called Silly Rabbit. I know that sounds funny off the top, but it's really, it's, the title is um, Silly Rabbit Easter is for Jesus. And there are about 10 of us that's going to be in that. Um, so we'd love if you can, if you're not like one of the um, fellow, um, you know, YouTubers, that you can just at least watch and show us some support. It will come up on my channel. And it's basically freestyle for easter i'm going to be talking about flowers easter lilies but you have people going to do tablescapes one of the ladies she's going to be doing a painting i'm not sure what that's going to be about but it's all surrounding you know the reason that we celebrate each other, which is the burial death and resurrection of christ so we are faith-based so you know that's a part of my channel here so we'll be looking at that so hope that you'll get to join us at that time so now let's go ahead. Oh, so Pastor Juanita is with us, but let me go a little bit further. So 
She says, there are 12 watching and only nine thumbs up. See, this is how Stephanie is. She's like, there. well, there are 14 people watching right now and there are only there are nine thumbs up. She's just like, where are the other ones? Go ahead and give her a thumbs up. Thank you, Stephanie. See, you know, I'm telling you, I got somebody got your back. I love you so much right now. <laughs> so Neil says, eating a healthy, diverse, fabric diet with lots of vegetables, fruits, grains, nuts, seeds, fish, lean meats, healthy fats like olive oil. That's a good one can relieve and coconut oil too, even on your skin. The same thing we talked about, like care for what you put on your skin, because as they say, if you know you have transdermal ab ab absorption, so it does get absorbed into your bloodstream and it's going into your body. So careful of what you put on there. But yes, coconut oil is good whenever eating or putting it on your skin. Mondel is not here. She's you know on a nice getaway weekend, but she did tell me in a previous slide that she does put coconut oil on her face, like her skin, and she has glowing skin all the time. So Pastor Mita says, hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you had a good time where you were earlier. And please bear in mind that our, the replay is available. You can always watch all that we discussed before. You came in at a very good point that we're talking about perimenopause and the different symptoms. And, you know, again, I'm not a doctor. This is just based on my experience. Those have been shared with me by many, many women. Things I've read up from, you know, what seems to be reputable sources. And we're just going to go through them. So the first one and most obvious to most people is going to be hot flashes. And those of you who are on here earlier, you saw that I was getting warm and I had to reach for my fan, my nice little fan here. So I had to reach for my fan and just kind of like cool myself down. So I'm still not out of the woods yet. Like, you know, like when it used to bother me at work, I used to have these, this is a good investment guys, you know, a little fan to put on your desk where you might be working. When it comes on, you just turn that bad boy on and you cool all the way down. Some people, they have to have it on like all the time. You know, whatever works for you, but, you know, don't just sit there and suffer. They also say it's good to, to layer your clothing so that way if you're feeling warm, you know, maybe like a sleeveless, you know, um, sleeveless top without sleeves, little sweater over it if it's cooler where you're working or sitting or in church or whatever, you have a shawl over it. So if you start to get warm and you can always, you know, shed some of the layers and that way you can cool on. And these things are all related to your hormones. Your body is producing less estrogen or estrogen as some people pronounce it. And it's causing all of the changes that we're gonna go through on here. Some of them you'll recognize them, some of them you won't. But either way, um, there are things worthy of mention. I think when I went through, um, initially I was like, what is going on with me? And I started to check up like the different symptoms and I found about 13 in my own life. But they put they had put 34, but I think I put an additional one to make it 35. So the first one is hot flashes. So let me take a look. I don't want to miss the notes here. She says, hi, person with it. She's a very good, she's very good with healthy living, and it shows her husband is a picture of health. Absolutely. And they both are, and that is wonderful. Tiffany says, is it possible to get hot flashes at a young age for reasons other than perimenopause? I am not sure. In that case, I'd say if you are having that, then um. You would need to check with your healthcare provider and just let them know and just be honest with them. And if you ever have a healthcare provider, there are other doctors out there. Just find someone who is a network. If it's whatever reason, whatever kind of doctor it is, specialist, whatever, if you are not comfortable with them, it is okay to go to someone else and have them, you know, have them help you. You can switch over to them. You know, I mean, you might feel bad because you're doing it, but at the end of the, end of the day, you're responsible for yourself. You have to be your own advocate. So if for whatever reason, you know, you don't feel comfortable talking to them about certain things, you can always find another option and talk with them and see what they say and they can help you and, you know, you can have a better outcome. So, you know, I would say, and I'm not saying that you're not comfortable with your doctor, Tiffany. I'm just saying that, you know, that is something you want to talk to your doctor about so that they can figure out what might be going on. Sometimes they may have to run some tests, check your hormone levels. It could just be some other things. It could be allergies sometimes because allergies can also elevate your, um, your, you know, your body temperature because that has happened to me before I was in my perimenopause and I didn't know what it was because, you know, we're in the Southeast here and I'm telling you the pollen is no joke in this area. And when I just moved up here from Florida, we didn't have that kind of pollen in Florida or in Jamaica. It was very, very um, rough for me after when I was like, why am I feeling so hot? was allergies, you know, seasonal allergies. So there are different reasons why, you know, that could be happening to you. So that is a key one there that is most recognizable in most people. And don't ever be embarrassed that you're having hot flashes or anything. It's a part of the process. You know, people just have to kind of be understanding and you have to do what you need to do for yourself. 
The next thing that is um, night sweats. And I think night sweats kind of goes hand in hand with hot flashes because, um, you know, you're sleeping. And this is what happened to me. I, I would be sleeping. And then in my sleep, I got really, really hot. And then I would start to sweat. You know, the heat, you know, makes your arm, um, you start to sweat. And then sometimes you get wet, all, which brings to the next one. that It leads to chills because if your body is wet from sweat or whatever, but mostly sweat, when it starts to evaporate, then you're going to be feeling cooler because, you know, I don't want to get into too much physics. <laughs> My husband is physics major. I never liked physics, but I am a science major. But it's called a latent heat of vaporization, which means that, you know, when you are, there's water on you and it's evaporating, that evaporation causes your, you know, your, the, the temperature to go down and therefore you feel cooler automatically. So that's basically what's happening to you. You're sweating a lot because you were hot. Then you, and because I had a coworker and she was just like, she said, her husband don't know what to do. Like you want to go sleep in another room because one minute she want the ceiling fan on, then she wake up and she's drenched in sweat and she want it off back and forth, covers up, covers down. And it's just like, oh my goodness, you know? And again, you know, talk to your healthcare provider, you know, your OBGYN, they're there to help you with certain things. Some people do hormone replacement. That was not something that I felt was appropriate for me, so I didn't do it. But you have to decide along with your, you know, your doctor, what is best for you to see. If you can manage it, then, you know, you just try to manage it, you know, as best as you can get your coping skills out. But, you know, that option is always your to seek medical help if that is really a problem because some people, they have it bad because she said she was drenched, like wet. She sometimes had to get up and change her clothing. That's how bad it was. Thankfully for me, you know, hopefully it doesn't change, but I get like warm flushes, not the hot ones. So you may see a little bit moisting on my forehead or something. You may see me using the fan or whatever, but it's not like extensive as how it is for some people. I'm trying to keep up on the chat here. So let me see. Uh, she says to God be all the glory. Yes. And that's for your, your good state of health there. He says, Neil says rare, but it, it happens. If it happens, check a doctor. Those in their twenties or thirties who experience sudden rushes of heat may have another problem, such as a fever, infection, or inflammation. Absolutely. And as I said, also, you know, allergies, seasonal allergies could be causing that as well. She says, I'll definitely need to look into it because I've definitely had some issues in regards to that body heat regulation. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so your body is, if your body is trying to cool down, absolutely. And that's a good sign too, to again, rehydrate. And that's I was saying, I typically try to keep like a glass of water by my bedside at night. So if for any reason I'm getting hot, I'm getting thirsty, then it's always here because water is life and it really helps you. Or sometimes you may need to take a pill. You may be having a headache and you need to take a pill in the middle of the night to go back to sleep because why sit there? Some people don't like to pop pills. I get it. I don't like to either. But sometimes you really need that intervention because if it's going to keep me up all night and I can't go to work the next day or I can't be available for my family, then I'm going to get up and take one. I don't want to go all the way downstairs so I always have my water for those various reasons that that is available. So that's as far as that goes, the night sweats. And the next thing, of course, one of the most obvious things so to you personally and not to other people will be that you're having irregular periods, which that can happen to anyone at any time. But if it's kind of like happening repeatedly, you're just like, okay, missing one, missing two, back again, back again, whatever. It's like, okay, something's up. I need to go talk to my doctor. And then they'll usually take some time, blood work. And then they look to see, okay, how are your hormones? You know, are you entering it? And they're like, yes, you're entering it. That's the reason for that. A word of caution, my ladies. Again, they say you are not in menopause. I mean, you haven't passed out of perimenopause until you actually have 12 consecutive months back to back to back of no period. So if you have 11 months without any of that, and you suddenly have at 11 months, you have another period, you are not in menopause. And that's why many times they see a lot of women who are in their 50s are having what they call a menopause baby because they thought they were in the clear, they weren't using any protection, they felt, oh, you know, I haven't had a period in such a long time. And so, you know how the whole story, I won't have to tell you about that part, but then they end up getting pregnant because they were actually still, you know, not in menopause. And that happened. So, definitely your body's trying to cool down okay we saw that one already so that's far as far as that goes here's a big one mood changes oh my gosh and this is where we ask the husbands to kind of like 
please, you know, work with us, you know, just, just help us out, you know, just please try to be understanding because it's not like we're trying to do it deliberately. Sometimes you feel like you just kind of like get really upset, you know, you're just like, you're irritable, short tempered, you know, you're, and it's because of the hormones you're changing in your body and they're kind of like trying to figure out which way they're going. And it just does that to you, you know? And then sometimes people don't even realize people have heard it from people too. Who sometimes, you know, like their blood sugar level goes down. They just get very irritable. And sometimes your own family member has to tell them, you know, that you're, you know, you probably need to check your blood sugar levels because you're being very irritable right now. And we can't see a just cause for it, especially that to a just cause, because, you know, I mean, there are going to be reasons that will cause you to be, um, to be irritable and it makes perfect sense. But sometimes if it's for no reason, just snapping at this person upset all the time and this and that and very picky and all of that, you know, that's the hormones kicking in. So we just ask for you to be with us. And even sometimes, you know, somebody who is not, you know, young person, like in your teens, it can still affect you that way. And sometimes, you know, there used to be this cliche, people, you know, some, some men who are not nice and I'm not bashing men at all because I love men, the men in my life, I support them and men on a whole, you know, I do support them because they're a very important part of creation and a part of the family. But there are some who would say like, is it that time of the month? That is really not nice. Please don't do that. <laughs> it just makes a bad situation worse. And you could really have somebody, you know, like, you know, answering in a way that is not appropriate. You know what I mean? So please bear that in mind. The next thing is like, um, you know, as far as, you know, your bust, you may have soreness there, which also happens sometimes in your younger ages, but when your body's trying to figure out which way you're going, you know, you know, um, in terms of your cycles and all of that. So that's another thing that you would probably notice as well too. Um, decreased libido, you know, and that's where the men are kind of like, okay, what's going on? They wanted to hurry up and get out at that point, but that is a part of it too, you know? So I'm just going to, I'm just trying to be real about it. That's going to happen to a lot of people as well, but it passes, it eventually gets out of the way. And it's just something that you have to consider and just try to be, you know, remembering your spouse as well. Yes, you're going through this, but you know, they're also there, there are things that they would like to have happen. So, you know, as we say, everything in moderation, just try to have a balance, you know, in your relationship. And I'm not going to try to go any deeper because again, that's a very private subject. The next thing again is um, people sometimes have tingling in their extremities. You know, like when you get pin and needles sometimes, like you call it in America, pin and needles. You know, I used to have those growing up sometimes. Like, you know, like it kind of like, like little pins are sticking you, you know, your hands or your feet or something. For some reason, the hormones do that too. I, I guess it's maybe some interaction how they react with the nerves in your body, but that can happen as well too. So you can have tingling in your extremities. Another big one here, and this was a challenge for me, and that was fibroids. Um, because the hormones are changing, you'll find that you know you're, 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 um, you're, you're, you have fibroids, and they are actually um, getting larger inside of your body. Some women will have it well before they reach perimenopause, but a lot of, lot of women will notice that during um, that time that they have fibroids. That was a big problem for me. And, you know, it is personal, but I still tell people a lot about it. I, you know, they could have actually killed me because you know, you're losing from your flow a lot and then it causes your iron level to go down a lot. And mine got so bad that it went down to 7.1. It should be, I think, at a 13 or 14, you know, as like, I think 13 is a good reading for you, really good. Well, mine went down to um, to 7.1. They said if you had gone, because I had to go to the urgent care once and another time I had to go to the ER. And they said, if you were at seven, we would have given you a blood transfusion. I was 0.1 away from getting a blood transfusion, guys, because it was that severe. I said, this thing is going to kill me. I literally heard my brain saying to me one day, how are you still standing on your two feet in all of this? You know, so it was time to intervene and get that handled. And there are different options that people use, you know, choose some people. They will maybe have like a hysterectomy that gets recommended a lot. It's not necessarily always the best thing for you. You have to decide along with your healthcare provider what is the best option for you. For me, I did not choose hysterectomy. I chose what they call a UFE, and I'll type it in here so you can see it. It's just an acronym though, UFE, and that's what it was. Let me hit enter so you can go on. And it's really for a uterine fibroid embolization, and I'm not going to promote the doctor specifically, but you can always take a look if for your area and see who they recommend or like who might be a good person for that. 
And if you even have to maybe like travel distances or even fly on a plane to get to somebody who's really good at that, highly recommend it. Because what they do is that they go in and um, they block. They're kind of like people who manage your veins, like vein. I forget what they're called. But anyway, he goes in and he gets something that blocks the arteries that are feeding the fibroids. And therefore, it stops them from growing. And eventually, they shrink. And, you know, they get really, really small. And that happens immediately. It immediately stops you from having that issue. The only thing about it is that it can, and in most cases, it will push you to start perimenopause. So they typically don't recommend that for women who are younger and of childbearing age, because if you do it, then you most likely might not be able to have any children because, you know, that has happened. So there are some women who they will have fibroids. They will, you know, get pregnant, have their child first. And then once the baby is born, because they can still survive in their fibroids, it just depends on how big they are. Sometimes it will prevent you from conceiving if they're really large because your body's just like, I can't take something else in here. So I'm not going to have that, egg, you know, attached fertilized egg attached here. So you end up, you know, that comes out. But, um, but yeah, so, you know, for women who are, you know, it's like, okay, you know, I mean, I'm good to go. It's okay if I um, go into menopause or perimenopause as the case may be. And so it's, you know, it can be a good option for many women. So there are different options that are out there. So it's really good to speak with your healthcare provider to see, you know, what might be best for you and always get a second opinion. In any kind of medical care that you have, you have to kind of like be your own advocate, get a second opinion, or at least do some research. Yes, doctors are great. I love them. They have helped me in so many ways in my life, but they're not perfect people just like anybody else. So it's always good to take a look at other information that's out there to see, you know, what other advice they can give you to help you in that regard. So that's what worked for me, guys. So my fibers, again, I tell you, I mean, I really thought it was going to kill me. And I'm going to even jump ahead to the next thing that stems from that. It's called, well, you know about anemia. Because if you're losing a lot that way from your body, your iron level is going to be, like I, like I said, mine had gotten down to 7.1. You know what that caused me to have? Sometimes this might not be the reason, but it, it could just be the hormones. I actually started to have like palpitations. I mean, like really bad palpitations. Why? Because my iron level was down. If your iron level is down, or rather the iron that's in your body helps your blood cells to transfer oxygen. And if you can't, if your body isn't getting enough oxygen, you may have shortness of breath. You may have heart palpitations because your heart is like, what is going on? Probably need to pump more blood. You can get more oxygen in, get more ear in, get more ear in. So you start to have palpitations and that can be very scary. It can also weaken your heart too, you know? And that's why I make sure to get my, you know, my whole system checked out because, you know, if you're having cases where your heart gets deficient a lot for oxygen, you know, you can actually have heart damage from that. So you want to make sure that if you're having like low iron, you know, there are supplements that are gentle. Some of them can be a little harsh. Some of them, you know, they actually are more gentle, especially the more liquid ones. You can take those. There was one of them that was kind of expensive, but expensive, but it helped me a lot. It was easier for my body to absorb because sometimes iron can cause you to have like, you know, constipation. And therefore, you know, it just makes you doesn't want to do it, you know, so you kind of like, just like I can be bothered with those, but they're, they may be more expensive, but it's really worth your health to invest a little bit more in some of those liquid ones. They work a little bit better. And again, you know, talk to your healthcare provider, like this one doesn't work well for me. Is there something else I can try? And in the meantime, while that is happening to you, drink a lot of water. And I did put, um, Oops, I did put my fruits on here. Have a lot of fruits, you know, your apples, bananas, oranges, and all of that to help you, you know, whatever you can get to get some fiber in, whether soluble or insoluble fiber to help you with that. But iron, it, you know, lack of it can cause that to happen because that surely did happen for me. It's like, oh my goodness, I just don't know if I could do this anymore. And I tried to, you know, like do it without having to go through the medical procedure and everything, and it was not working. I tried quite a few things and it you said to me, they said to me, Marlene, you cannot get in enough iron to supplement the amount of iron that you're losing. It's kind of like you have a hole, I mean, not a hole, like you have a boat with a hole in it and you're trying to pour water in using a little, you know, a little bucket and the boat is large and the hole is large. So you're trying to put in and it's coming, but it's just like, you will not get caught up. And they were right. You know, they were absolutely correct because it was not working. It really wasn't. And so I had to have that kind of medical intervention. So it just depends on your situation. 
So I usually do my own research when it comes to women's health and endometriosis has caused me to become anemic. So I'm trying to figure out ways to relieve the symptoms for that. Yes. And so, like I said, you know, those supplements are pretty good, but make sure that you're getting, you know, the ones that your body absorbs easily. Talk to your doctor and they can help you that. It's a bit of a struggle um, that I have it, but I'm still trying to put through because of genetics. Yeah. Yes. And I had that problem too. My sister and I, I don't think she minds me saying it, but we had really, really bad problems, you know, with our cycle growing up until eventually it leveled up. I mean, the cramps would be so bad. We would actually grow up green stuff. And there were a few girls in school that were like that as well, too. I mean, when I tell you the cramping was bad, it's like we started to, you know what, let's head this thing off. So again, sometimes there is a place for pain meds. I'm not a pill popper, but there's sometimes and you really need to take it because we're just like, okay, I'm starting to feel this and this is starting to come on. Snip it in the bud before it goes any further because it was really, really bad. And like I said, it would be so bad. It's like your body's trying to get everything out above and below and you're having these bad cramps, you know, throwing up and everything. And my neighbor had that problem. Some of my friends had that problem and everything. So, you know, it was it was kind of difficult. But once we figured it out, we kind of like got through. And of course, again, water and fiber. Um, so the next thing now is headaches. And this is also, again, a part of the whole drop in estrogen levels. And guys, when we're going through this phase, if we tell you we have a headache, it's not the cliche, I have a headache. It's not. It is very, very real. And it happens usually right here. For me, it did anyway. I know, um, Marie, Aneta, you said that you did, um, that you were having, um, you know, like migraines and stuff. I don't think you mind me saying it. But um, that is a part of it, too, is very real. So that's, again, something you have to manage, you know, whether it be on your own or your doctor. But don't just sit there and just, you know, have a migraine all day or a headache all day when there are options. And also, too, it can be a sign that you're dehydrated because sometimes you're sweating a lot. You may be flowing a lot, you know, as a female. And then you're dehydrated, so your body needs more water. So that kind of helps to get you a little bit better in the right direction. Another one was changes in taste. Sometimes you can have a change in, in the taste. Food stays different to you all of a sudden. And again, you know, I didn't realize. I mean, like I said, I'm a science major, even though my job really isn't in the science field. So I knew kind of a little bit about hormones and stuff. But honestly to God, once I started researching that perimenopause, I had no idea how much hormones are a big part of your life. And not just necessarily like feminine hormones, just hormones in general. For your brain to function, for your, you know, your your kidneys to function, your gut to function, all the different things that's going on and connected right there. Your hormones play a very, very big part of that. So you can have changes in taste. The next one again, let me make sure I'm keeping up with the chat here. He says for supplements, you should take liquids versus tablets as your body will absorb about 80% and it's about half of that for tablets. Yes, it's very, it's definitely, definitely much better for you if you take the liquid is what I've noticed personally, but you know, you can always share your personal experience if that has been the case for you, but that is the case for me. So um, and Marie says, my issue was polycystic ovarian syndrome. Glad I'm over that. Okay, wonderful. I'm glad you are too. Congratulations. More power to you. And that's the next thing. There's so many different things, you know, that can that can actually affect us. You know what I mean? So we just have to try to stay on top of them. The next one, this is a big one again to its fatigue. And it can kind of connect the dots on this one because if you are having hot flashes and you're waking up during the nighttime, then of course you're not going to be able to, um, to sleep very well because you're constantly waking up because that happened to me. And it's like your body, all of a sudden your, your body develops this weird sleeping pattern. I'd be waking up at like 2 a.m. and I cannot go back to sleep. I said, oh, Lord of mercy. You know, if it was on the weekend, I'd be okay because I'm just like, church starts a little bit later on a Sunday. I can sleep in on a Saturday morning, so I'll be okay. But like if I have work the next day or I have things I have to do on a day off and I have like an early appointment, it's like, I really need to get back to sleep. I never did try melatonin. Some people say that melatonin works. So that is an issue for you that might be a possibility. Again, I'm not recommending anything for you to take. Always talk to your doctor and hear what they say. But I've heard that melatonin helps. My son got some recently. So because, you know, he's up studying and sometimes he kind of like my older son that is. So, um, you know, they're both in college now, but he's the older one. He got some recently. So we'll check to see if, um, you know, I'll probably try one, you know, every now and then to see how it helps me. But that is what some people say might be an option. So you kind of connect the dots there where if you're not getting enough sleep because you're waking up a lot at mm -hmm. night, then um, you will definitely find that 
you will need to you will need to have that you know you'll need to um find a way to get some sleep just try and sometimes too even if you can't sleep during the night you know you take a, take a long time to fall back asleep take a nap in the daytime you may be coming from work or maybe you're you know a homemaker or you know it's the weekend or something you know just take a nap in the middle of the day it could be in the afternoon because like on a sunday it's quite often if i don't have meetings or whatever or something at our church or whatever um or something urgent like going out to celebrate someone or whatever i'll try to have a nap on a sunday afternoon because naps are very good for you they say try to have one at least once per week and you'll be, you'll be surprised to see that it actually helps your heart as well it's good for your heart both for male and female for everybody but yes, yeah, so try to get your sleep in. If you can't get it in, you know, you may need to get some sleep aids, you know, try for the more, you know, organic, natural ones and try to take a nap when you can. You know, you say, oh, you know, like older people has napping in the daytime. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, get a nap whenever you can get one in, get one in because it's actually helping you. As long as, you know, you have everything covered securely at your home. If you have, you know, children that are still younger, as long as everything is clear, you know, take your little nap and, enjoy all of that and if you all, also if you're a new mom too you know naps are really good you know what i mean so you know take them as needed you know what i mean just don't try to do it too close to bedtime because then it's kind of like you're gonna put yourself in the same situation again and it's always kind of funny too how it's kind of like you know your body kind of develops patterns as with most things so because like with me what started to happen is that initially i was just waking up because i was hot you know or warm because i was really hot that hot but warm enough to wake me up. Even when I wasn't having a hot flash, I was still waking up at those weird hours. I'm just like, oh my goodness, you know, this is just too much, you know? So I got to dealing with that. The next thing again is bloating. You may have bloating sometimes that comes on with that. And um, again, because of all the hormones and those extra gases that are being produced, you'll have to take a look at your diet to see that might be causing extra bloating in there. And try to modify that and just you know sometimes you may use like um they say like a warm compress on your tummy and that kind of like will help to ease all of that you know from your body you can also have digestive problems you may be having like heartburn different things going on in your gut and that's because what they call like the flora of your body with flora is basically just talking about the different type of bacteria because you have healthy bacteria in your gut and some bad ones in there as well too especially if you're sick but the healthy ones and the other ones, they kind of like they're kind of like out of balance a little bit because of the hormone fluctuation. So sometimes it can cause you to have digestive problems. So again, that's another symptom of it there. So let me see. So I'd glad to see you pass that. Thanks, Neil. Hormones affects your mood and mind. Try music, chocolate, power nap, etc. Absolutely. And pace yourself. Yes, absolutely. So that's the next one. You can also have joint pains. I did have that. <laughs> I'm just like, what is this? Joint pain, really? And it's just like, sometimes you wonder, am I going crazy? What is really going on? I mean, where is all of this coming from? And then you start to do some research and just like, oh my goodness, it is real. I'm not imagining this. Like, like here, my wrist and my elbow. I had them. Hormones again. Why? Because it affects the elasticity of your muscles. And that causes, you know, your, you know, your joints are connected that way. You may have some slight inflammation in there or whatever. Here we go again, you know, another effect, you know, like joint problems. And I'm just putting all of these out there. So if you ever have any of these and you figure you're going into that stage, you're like, I'm not crazy. You know, these things are real. They're actually happening. And this could be where sometimes some people don't even realize that they are in perimenopause. They're actually in it and they don't realize. And so it's kind of like, you know, they're wondering, they're trying to check for this, check for that. And when this is the reason, this is what's causing all of these problems. And I'm not saying if you have these, that's what you are having, but they're good indicators that you could be going through something like that. You know what I mean? So another weird one is electric shock. Thank goodness I didn't have that one. <laughs> you know, like when you were little, it used to happen to me like when I was like, I might hit my elbow somewhere, you feel like an electric shock, we call it, and it just kind of like shoots up in your arm or whatever. That for some reason happened to me a lot when I was growing up. Like I'd elbow hit the wall and it's kind of like, what is that? But they say that can happen to, again, nerves and the hormones interacting together. I didn't make it up, guys. People go through it and it's reported, it's chronicled, so it's there. The next one is itchiness and dry skin. I definitely did have that one. And to some extent, I still do have it because, again, the hormones and how it affects your skin and, you know, the oils being secreted and all of the moisture and everything, it causes your skin to dry. It may even peel in some cases, like on your legs, you know, like just thin peeling, but it could happen to you. 
exfoliate a lot and that kind of like helps with that but it's definitely very real because for me personally i can tell you that was definitely one of mine and i'm not out of the woods yet you know and if you have eczema like i do you will tend to sometimes have it even more where you know your skin you know your hands and so on they have to lotion my hands like a lot and i can't use like scented lotions i have to use the ones that are more natural you know like um things with shea butter and cocoa butter i'm so sorry my little friend she um she has some of those products and i forgot to ask her. it's just been so much going on in our life right now so i didn't get to ask her to kind of like show the products that she does um because it does help you know and especially in the you know time of winter like we are right now or you know whatever in the world you are depending on what you what season you're in but your skin dries out and so you kind of need that kind of help so she says marlene welcome my friend jackie 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 i didn't see you i'm not seeing you jackie well if you're there and you can type welcome 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 jackie i'm so glad my husband is around the car he just want to make sure i sign jackie i'm so glad to have you and i just wanted to know that you know we're just looking out for women you know each other we have a few men on the chat here as well too because it's really important that you know the men are behind us that they support us and they help us because it's a lot we have 34 different symptoms here for perimenopause but we talked about general health earlier about diet, exercise, staying hydrated, and all of those different things that are important part. I did so show, show some fruits, talk about like soluble fiber, and just your overall peace of mind. You know, praying and meditation is a very big part of it too. I didn't drop that in there, but that is very, very important. You know, connecting with God, it's a very good part. Reading, watching things that help you to relax, you know, all of that. But we'll touch on it a little bit more. So we have a couple more points left to go. Like I said, it's 34 of them, and I really wanted to cover all of them because if you are having them, you kind of have an idea. I'm in perimenopause. This may be what it is that's causing this. So we talked about dry skin just now, and we did talk about insomnia, not being able to sleep, and just trying to manage them with maybe like melatonin or something that your healthcare provider provides for you. And Jackie, if you've never subscribed to my channel before, I do hope that you will hit the subscribe button. I do talk about gardening a lot because that's the main focus of my channel for my regular videos, but for my lives, they're topical, they're seasonal. And I just try to do stuff that I figure people have questions about or that I had questions about because my channel mainly was to help people. I made the channel in memory of my mother because she was an excellent gardener, very good with flowers. My mother-in-law is very good at arranging flowers. My grandmother loved flowers. So I started this channel on Mother's Day a few years ago in memory of her, but it's also to help people in different areas. And I, if you tend to do a lot of different things in your regular videos, the algorithm in YouTube gets confused. It doesn't know who to present your videos to. So for my lives, that's where I address issues that people typically have questions about. And some of them are fun, you know, they're always serious like this one. We'll decorate shopping halls, you know, it just depends, we'll decorate. But for today, this is what we are on. So I just wanted to give you an overview on why I would like for you to subscribe. And if you just want to watch my live videos alone, I'm perfectly fine with that. Whatever you prefer, short videos, you know, um, regular videos, lives, as the case may be. And you can also give me a thumbs up whoever is on watching. If you haven't done it yet, it helps to push the video out to other people. So let me get back on track here. So we talked about insomnia, you know, and how to manage that. The next one is that you may have memory lapses. And I'm getting warm again, like I <laughs> told you earlier. So... You can have memory lapses. And again, it's because of the hormone, the hormones in your body, how they're reacting. So guys, you know, children, please forgive us when it happens. It's not intentional. And even when some women are pregnant, they say that they have like a, you know, baby brain or pregnant head or some kind of cliche, whatever they call it. Uh, sometimes I try to stay away from those because they can be offensive to people. But, but um, you know, it is similar things happens in menopause to many women. I did have that. I was like, what did I need down? What did I need downstairs? I mean, upstairs again, or what I need downstairs again. You go out and you come up back and you're boom, I'm there again. So, it, you know, it happens and you can have memory losses. All you can do is just try to, you know, make sure that you keep on track of it. And again, sometimes, you know, you can have early dementia. So there's a way that they see you can always look to see which one it might be in your case. If you're forgetting something, they say that seem, that makes sense. Like you came downstairs and you forgot to say, get the pen you came for or get go upstairs for the scissors you went to get or something. That's perfectly fine. You left, you can't find your keys. You can't find your phone. That's normal. It happens to everybody. Maybe a little bit more if you're in perimenopause or pregnant or whatever other conditions. But if it's a case where you're having other types of cognitive issues like, you know, dementia or anything like that, 
you know, it's the things that you're forgetting or the things that you're doing. For example, like say if you put your shoe in the freezer, there's no reason for you to do that. You know, it just, it doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you put that in there? That doesn't add up. So that's when you're kind of like, okay, it's probably something else and I need to get it checked. So that's just kind of like an example. Or you may put like an egg in the bathtub. Why would I put an, you know what I mean? Just something off like that. In those cases, that probably would be a case where it could be some other kind of um, cognitive issue that's going on with you there. The next one again is, um, and it also difficulty concentrating. That's Those kind of go hand in hand. And that also too can be because you're not getting enough sleep. So if you're not getting enough sleep, of course, it's going to affect, you know, you know your memory is going to affect, you know, like, you know, how you concentrate on what's going on. So just find, you know, ways to kind of cope with that. And again, you're a healthcare provider. You also find that, and this was definitely true for me, and it still actually is you kind of have brittle nails. For some reason, my nails, they would just break easily. I had to be keep them reasonably short because I tend to talk with my hands a lot, as you can tell from, you know, if you watch me, sometimes you'll hit the table, hit that cherry, go to grab something, and it would just break. I'm just like, oh, my goodness. I would tear eat. Well, not even tear. It would just break, you know? So I did have that problem. And, of course, keep on top of your supplements as well, too, because that kind of helps Hand in hand, not as much for me, but it happens with a lot of women too. They have thinning hair. And that's why a lot of times when women get older, you see that they start to wear their hair shorter because, you know, the hair is thinning and they want to have a healthy looking head of hair. So they cut it short. And sometimes if it's severe for you, that that may be an option for you. My hair did get thinner, like at some spots, maybe like at the hair and a little bit right here. And that was when my iron was really, really low. You know, I could see it. And it's not like 100%, you know, normal, you know, as far as it was before perimenopause. So that can also be something that affects many, many women. And again, it's the estrogen level that controls many of these things. So you'll find that, you know, you know, your hair is thinning. And again, you, know, you can just, you know, you can get a nice haircut and that helps, you know, sometimes coloring your hair. If you like to color your hair, may add some more depth to it. You know, it, it just depends on what works for you. I don't want to get too far behind in the chat. So let me see where we are. So Neil says, key thing here is that we communicate with the ladies to say we notice these changes and ask how we can help. Sometimes I forget. Yeah, absolutely. Because sometimes we do, you know, you, you, um, you're just going through it and you're not communicating very well. And sometimes you're not asking, you're just making an assumption. Again, this is not just for spouses. I did say spouses are welcome, but it's for your children too, because you may react you know, with that kind of like mood swing and your kids are just like, what is mom going through? And they may not even say anything to you, but just like, just leave her alone. I mean, there was one, this lady, this a couple, this, this family, they said it was, but it's like, mom, isn't that so, leave her alone. Don't. I mean, it was that bad. They had kind of like, just give her space when she was just kind of like, you know, and after a while it went away. But again, it's hormones and everybody has their own experience. Your mom is typically a good way, you know, like to see what might happen for you, but it doesn't mean that it's, going to be what happened to her that definitely happens to you. You know, it varies from person to person, but that's a good guide in terms of what might have happened. So if you're younger and you never spoke with your mother or even older, your mother is still alive and you never spoke with her about what kind of symptoms she had during that time, it's good to talk about it now because, you know, later in life when you're going through, maybe she might not be there anymore and you can't have that conversation. When I was going through my, my mother had it really passed, rest her soul. So you know, we were pretty close. So she would tell me a few things here and there. There's some things I really wish I had known to ask her because, you know, I can't anymore. But, you know, I'm kind of like, it's almost all behind me right now, this whole process. So I kind of like just had to navigate the waters. But she did tell me a few things and I could say to myself, okay, that's probably what's going on there. You know, but a lot of things that I did go through, she didn't get to tell me them. So Jacqueline, oh, thank you. Oh, hi, Jackie. I see you made it on the chat. Thank you so much. So glad that you made it. And you can share your experiences. You can greet anyone on the chat if you like. You know, we're here to exchange ideas. I'm making this one a little longer because I want to go through all the points because we're not going to probably touch on this again unless something triggers it in the future. So I wanted to go through all of these. I understand if people have to leave or for whatever reason, but those who can stay, I love your company. I love having you can still set it out and share it out if, with anyone if you like. There's no, you know, I'm quite okay with that. I'm happy to have you because we're all here to learn and share together. There's always something to learn. And next thing for some women um, is weight gain. And again, it's hormones again. You may notice that you're, you know, putting on a few pounds for that reason. Again, it's all just to basically look at what's going on in your life and just try to modify the things. You may need to monitor your diet a little bit and see if there are things you can change, you know, exercise a little bit more. Sometimes no matter what you do, it just doesn't change because it's your hormones and it's just like you're trying and doing all of these things 
and it's not changing. And you just have to kind of like, just kind of like, just live healthy as best as you can. And as they say, this too shall pass because, you know, the hormones level out after a while and then your body kind of figures out, okay, this is the way I'm going. And then you'll see that things become a little easier for you to manage at that point. And for some people, it can take, it can take anywhere from, oh, I think they said maybe like from seven up to 14 years, I think. So around average, most women, though, it's about 10 years. So maybe less, so maybe more. Again, it just depends on how early you start and what happens in your family and all of the symptoms that you um, endure. So Neil says, yes, check with parents and grandparents to see their health history so you know what to expect and you can address it before you get there. Absolutely. And like I said, sometimes they may not be available to tell you anymore. So at least, you know, you'd have had that conversation. If you didn't get to have it and your mom has passed, I'm so sorry. Um, but there are others, people around here that can help you and give you information, you know, based on their experience. So all is not lost, you know. There, and the good thing is that we have all of this internet and social media, so that is there to help us in this regard. Just be careful of some of the things that you pay attention to, because not everything is for everyone. What works for one person might not work for you. So always, you know, try to bear that in mind. <laughs> Andrea says, I hope mine is less. <laughs> Yes, I hope so too. Again, that's my sister and she's my younger, well, the oldest sister I have. She's a little bit younger than me. So she's kind of like right behind me in the stream of things. <laughs> okay. So next we have stress incontinence and stress incontinence means, because there are two different types of incontinence. There's urge incontinence, which means an incontinence just meant you're using the rest, you're peeing a lot is basically what it means. Urge incontinence means that you have the urge to pee a lot. So you want to go more often than it can, could be that you're drinking a lot of water. It could be that you're having some other health issue that's causing it. Stress incontinence means that you, you may laugh, ha, 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 and you pee your pants. Yes, it can happen. Thank God that wasn't one of mine, but it is an option too. So there are things you'll have to put in place to protect yourself if that is an option for you. So may, you may cough and it happens. You could laugh hard and it happens. So that is something else that is there for you to bear in mind. Again, things happen and you just have to put things in place to deal with it. You know, it's just a part of life. And, you know, we go through that. Sometimes the men, they have their issues. So they call it like a thing, stoppage of water or whatever. So, you know, they have their own things that they have to deal with. Sometimes it may be a little later in life for them, but they still have to go through their own stuff too. So it's just like, it's not just us alone that have to deal with all of this. Who says, um, yes, I hope it is less. So that's as far as that goes. So stress incontinence, you, know, you can find that, you know, ha, 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 or whatever. And again, talk to your doctor and see if they can help you if it's really something that is, you know, a major issue for you. Usually it's not a lot, though, but nevertheless, it's not something that you want to have to deal with all the time. And then the next one is, um, they say sometimes it can actually affect your blood sugar level. So it might, you know, it may kind of like go back and forth. You know, your blood sugar might elevate or go down. And again, hormones, because I'm telling you. Once I got to perimenopause, you know, that's when I realized how much, you know, your hormones really affect you. I'm just like, you know, you think of hormones, oh, you know, because I, like I said, I'm a science major. They talk about digestion and different things. They talk about the hormones, not realizing that basically everything that happens in your body, there is some hormone that is at play in there. And that, you know, kind of, you know, that kind of um, makes it you know, you just develop these issues, you know, so it's just, it's, it's unfortunate, but part of life. So I was trying to read to the side here. Um, Stephanie says, oh yes, a cough will make it. <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> and we're keeping it real right here, guys. Just want to see with my lives. I try to keep it real. I stay within the confines of YouTube. So I don't say things I'm not supposed to say, you know, and you know, same thing goes for you. Your comments just, you know, and you've been very respectful. And I really like that in terms of you know, what you put on there and all of that. But we try to keep it real because that's why we're here to learn from each other and to share our stories that we feel okay enough. You know, you have your boundaries, of course, because there's some things people may ask me and I'm just saying I'm not comfortable answering that or, you know, not in this forum. You know, you can DM me directly on Instagram if you want or whatever. And I may or may not tell you, it just depends on what it is. So let's see now. So Astashana, welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad to have you. Please be sure to watch the, um, the uh, if you weren't on here watching prior, please be sure to watch the replay. You can always listen to it while you do your daughter's here, wash the dishes or do whatever, you know, comb your, brush your son's here, um, driving in the car, whatever, because we had some really good points on here. So I'd love for you to, um, 
to do that if you didn't get on earlier, but I do want to welcome you to the chat. So you said benign prostatic hyperplasia BPG, stoppage of water. Okay, ma'am. Thank you for that. You know she's coming from the medical side of things, right? Because <laughs> I would have never gotten that right. You said, welcome, doctor. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. So she said it's benign prostatic hyperplasia. I'm probably not even pronouncing that right. And I'm a science major, right? But anyway, <laughs> she says that's the swelling of the prostate that causes difficult urination for men. And that's what I was saying. So they have their own issue. You know, we have ours. They have theirs. When we are out of ours and it's like, oh, I'm in menopause, it's all behind me, then theirs just starts. And again, it's about grace and mercy. So we need grace and mercy from them. When it's our time, we have to show them the same grace and mercy when it's their time. Did you said BPH. Absolutely. So then let's see where we are. So we talked about stress incontinence, about that your blood sugar levels could um, go up and down. Another one, again, is allergies, guys, because I noticed that with myself, and they say it's because your histamine levels goes up because of how the hormones are interacting. And again, I'm not a doctor. This is just based on research that I've done and uh, my own experience with this. And it is that I have, I have more allergies now than I ever did in my life. Back in Jamaica, I'm probably allergic to one thing. Now I'm just like, I can't have nuts. I can't have lactose, except unless it's maybe in ice cream or maybe a little cooked cheese here or there. I can't have this. I can't. I never had that, you know, and as I've gotten gotten older, I've been getting more allergies. I'd have to try to, you know, control it and, you know, I'll take some of the medications that help me with that, but I don't take them too often because I don't want to be like stuck on medicines unless I have to, you know what I mean? So Neil says there are natural ways to deal with that, thankfully, absolutely. And she says, you have a, oh, sure, Stephanie, please put your question in. If we can answer it for you, we will. If we can't, we'll let you know. So it's maybe a little delay, but whenever you're finished typing there, I will be happy to take a look at it because that's why we're here to share ideas. I don't know everything. And this is actually how I got really on you to what motivated me along with my mother's passing. And that was, um, you know, when I went to the perimenopause, as you said, some people, they gain weight. I lost weight because when I had that UFE procedure, for some reason, I lost weight. And it slowly came back. I lost about 10 pounds. And if, I'm not a very large person. So if I lose 10 pounds, then obviously you know, you're going to see the difference. I had to change my clothing. They were dressing differently. They're like skinny jeans. I was like, skinny what? <laughs> so um, this was years ago. So I said, I thought skinny jeans are just like for youngsters and stuff. But all it, well, it is, I, I, they're weird. I was like, okay, let's see how they do this. And it kind of helped me with fashion. And then I started looking at other things, how to style my hair, different ways on there, you know, just different things, you know. And of course, you know, they recommend if you're going to start a channel to do stuff in areas that you figure you kind of have a good handle on so you can give people good information. So that's why it was kind of like guarding for me with just, you know, a smidgen of decorating here and there. But yeah, so she says, I had a hysterectomy at 24. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. She said, I've been having hot flashes on and off for years. When will it stop? Oh, no. Well, I'm sorry that you went through that, Stephanie. I'm so sorry about it. I really don't know because, again, I'm not a doctor. They may be able to provide you with an answer for that because bear in mind that even though you have a hysterectomy and you're taking out your uterus, your ovaries are still inside your body. And so your ovaries also, you know, produce hormones that also affect the whole feminine cycle and all of that. That's why a lot of times they say, will take your uterus out but we're going to leave your ovaries in. Sometimes they will take them out because maybe you have a pre predisposition to certain diseases or there are certain things happening on your ovaries that they figure we need to go in and take them out and they'll do it. There's some people, because like my mother, um, you know, she died of ovarian cancer, rest her soul. And there's some people who they check for the BRCA gene, B-R-A-C-A, they'll check to see if they have it, if they have it, they'll just go in and take their ovaries out. I personally am not going to take my ovaries out, not at this point, but I have to keep a handle on what's going on inside my body. So, you know, I mean, I try to be a good patient, but sometimes I'll ask them, you know, over a few years, I'm like, can you just do a full scan of that, my abdomen just to see how my ovaries look? Because they can't feel them on my exam. So they, they don't know if something is going on in there with them. You know, so your ovaries, definitely to the point is that that could be what's causing you to have that because you know, there are different um, hormones that produ get produced from your ovaries. So 
they are there still, even though your uterus is not there. But that's definitely a discussion that you could have with your um, with your doctor to see what their take is on it. And they, of course, they'll also, you know, do some blood work to see, you know, like how your hormones are going at that point. And then when they see how your hormones are going at that point, then they can tell, you know, exactly what is causing this. Because most likely if you're having hot flashes, that more than likely would be what it is. So let's see, the Corinne Moore with Anita. Hello, hello, Anita. Welcome, welcome. So glad to have you. you said, and everyone, first time catching your live, interesting topic. Absolutely. And we could talk all day about it because, um, and I would recommend if you do have the time, and you, you don't have to watch me at a later time. You could just, you know, go to my channel, Marlene's How To's, if you are subscribed. If not, please do. But just hit, you know, the notification bell twice. But you can go in and you can just tap on live videos once this is over or any other one I've done before. And you can go and you can always just listen to it. You know, you can be washing the dishes. You could be combing your child's hair, your daughter, or, you know, what if you have a daughter or you could be cleaning if you can hear it over the cleaning. Just whatever, you know, dusting your house, whatever, mopping, whatever. And you can you can put it on your TV. You can put it on wherever. You could just listen to it. And that way you can catch up with all of it because they're very important points. We are talking about perimenopause right now, but we were initially just looking at wellness in women overall from the very beginning about diet, exercise, you know, proper hydration, you know, um, just, you know, being able to relax, you know, and just take one day at a time. There's also prayer and meditation, you know, that's a very good part of it. So, cause we're getting towards the latter part of the list right here, but just to know that, you know, that is available if you ever did want to find it. Um, so Shauna says there will be imbalances with hormones, but it's hard to tell how long, I'm so sorry to hear this. I will. Oh, it will. Oh, long it will take to stop. Yes. Sometimes your OBGYN will prescribe meds to help to combat this. Absolutely. So you said I have to. I had to go back in 2004, and they took out one ovary. These last two years, the hot flashes have been really bad. So you still have one ovary left. So that means that um, hormones are still being produced inside your body. So therefore, that could be, um, you know, most likely what's causing it. So you say, okay, guys, we are four thumbs up short. <laughs> Listen, Stephanie got my back for real on this channel. She does not play. She's just like, if there are 12 of you on the chat, there should be 12 thumbs up. But, you know, people come and go because... We're here for a while on this one today because I feel it's really important, you know, so I'm just going through all of them to cover every single one. So we're not too far from the end, but nevertheless, I did want to cover them. So she's basically saying all the people that have come on because we've gone up to like, I think the high chat maybe was, was it like 16 or something? You know, so she's just like you had 16 people on, but you don't have 16 likes. So you can always just click off the chat part, the live chat part and just give me a thumbs up. If you don't want to, then that's fine. She's just saying that that's something that you can do if you wanted to. And this helps to give YouTube a good signal so that they'll push it out to um to others. All right. So um, so we're moving along on this list here. So the next one is basically osteoporosis. And um, this is where your bones actually, they start to lose. Um, the calcium is being lost out of your bones. And of course, it can cause your spine to curve like that. You see sometimes a lot of older women or sometimes even men too, like your spine is going to be curved over a little bit like this. They're losing calcium. So it's good to have supplements on there. So that way, you know, um, that's going to help to, I don't know if it's going to, I mean, I don't think you can reverse osteoporosis, but you can certainly slow it down. But just be careful of some of the stuff you take because some of them have certain type of um, side effects. And it's always good to weigh the pros and the cons, you know, based on how this thing is going to help me. Is it going to benefit me more so that I should keep, you know, stay on this or take it or start taking it as the case may be? So just look at the pros and cons, you know, talk about it with your healthcare provider and they can tell you what works best. But yes, yeah, so your bones will get weaker and especially, and sometimes, you know, it never, it just gets weaker and then it just stays that way. And then, you know, when women get 